Absolutely fantastic. Exactly what we want to see. Thousands of fans are coming out for an FA Cup tie, making sure this competition means as much as we all believe it does in the football pyramid. Not all about the Premier League, certainly not for us here on Talk Sport 2. Uh, we're following tonight an EFL club against a non-league side as well. So we can certainly call it the magic of the FA Cup. Sometimes it's a phrase we use too much, but I think very rarely we see something that's truly astounding. And tonight would certainly be a result that is spoken about for many, many decades to come. Coventry City cast in the role of villains tonight, aiming to make the last eight for just the second time this century. And if Maidstone United could reach the FA Cup quarterfinals, it would be near enough a miracle. Live at the CBS Arena for Coventry against Maidstone United, live on TalkSport 2, in the company of the former Arsenal and Stevenage midfielder Adrian Clark and our very own Ian Danter. Thank you and a very good evening to you wherever and however you're listening to Talk Sport 2 on FA Cup Midweek. First of three nights of fifth round action, a place in the last day up for grabs. Every club has its little video montage that it seems to show before kick-off in home matches. Coventry City are no exception and the centrepiece of their history montage that they show before the teams come out was that sunny day in 1987 when Keith Houchin stooped to conquer six yards out and planted a diving header into the back of the net so that Coventry had the greatest day in their history winning the FA Cup against Tottenham Hotspur. What they don't want to do is provide Maidstone United with the greatest day in their history tonight. Not since Blythe Spartans in 1977-78 has a team below the top five divisions made this stage of the FA Cup and no team from below the fifth level have ever got to the last eight of the FA Cup. So history does indeed beckon for the Stones from Kent this evening. Having already dumped out one championship side in Ipswich Town, you heard it live on TalkSport in the previous round at Portman Road. Well, Coventry City did lose here last time out, only their first defeat at the Coventry Building Society Arena since October when Preston came here and won by three goals to nil on Friday evening. Mark Robbins makes six changes from that starting lineup. Let's bring you the full team. Ben Wilson keeps his place in goal. Joel Latibodier is used at right back. Bobby Thomas, Liam Kitching, and Jake Bidwell make up the rest of the back four. Victor Torp and Liam Kelly making his first start since September in defensive midfield. And then Fabio Tavares making a rare start. He's made a couple of sub appearances in the FA Cup. Casey Palmer and Hadji Wright in behind Ellis Sims in attack. As for Maidstone, well, George Ellicobi sweated over the team that he picked for the recent defeat to Aigley in the National League South. He's made three switches from that team, and most of those who took to the field at Portman Road are in evidence from the start tonight, including goalkeeper Lucas Kovalan, who made 12 saves against Ipswich in the previous round. 12. Rafe Brown, Rhys Greenwich, George Fowler and Harry Kipriano make up the back four from right to left. Sam Bone, Jacob Berkeley, Agupong and Sam Korn, who scored in rounds two, three and four for Maidstone in midfield. Manny Duku leads the line up front. Liam Sol and Lamar Reynolds, who also scored at Portman Road, either side of him. Michael Salisbury is the referee. Play up Sky Blues is thumping its way through the speakers. And we are ready for the off on your home of the FA Cup. Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2. Right old racket around this stadium, Adrian Clark. It's magnificent. Tremendous atmosphere, a real sense of occasion. I cannot wait to see what unfolds. So we're underway, and Maidstone in their yellow ochre shirts and black shorts and socks are heading from left to right as we look. We're in the west stand, about 20 rows back, myself and Adrian, inside the Maidstone half of the field, but they're attacking the other end, the south stand, where the 5,000 or so fans have travelled up from Kent around the M25 and all that to get here tonight. And straight away the ball sent up to the edge of the air in Lati Budgier got a foot in to guide it back to his keeper Wilson because Lamar Reynolds was just in behind him. But now Fabio Tavares launches Coventry's first attack. Casey Palmer saw Hadji right in space inside the area. Heavy touch from Ellis Sims and it's very calmly done at least at first down the left-hand side for Maidstone United. But they've lost out in the end there. Harry Kipriano was the man that was trying to tease it downfield but he's been dispossessed and Coventry have it back on halfway minute gone nil nil fast and furious start as you might expect a little half chance for an opportunity for Maidstone inside the first minute Sam Corn thread threaded a, an optimistic through ball and it asked the question 
of Latibody Air, but he dealt with it OK. And then immediately Coventry back on the front foot with Casey Palmer launching that counter. So, yeah, bodes well, doesn't it? Nice bright start. It's going to be a long wait to get back on the motorway later, judging by this stadium. It is 95% full, I would say, tonight at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Now, here's Hadji Wright, the American. Down the left-hand side for Coventry, attacking the end to our left, the north stand. Sends a cross in, flicks off the top of the head of Ellis Sims. He didn't climb for it. Doesn't look like he believed it was coming his way. It must have taken a deflection on its way through. And Tavares is herring after it down the far right-hand side, but can't keep it in play. And so it will be a throw into Maidstone in their left-back position. Nil-nil. Yeah, nice positive start there from, from Hadji Wright. The defender, the right-back, just stood off him a touch. Raf Brown... And it allowed him to knock the ball out of his feet, had you right. And we know he's got pace and he, he delivered a good ball. I, I agree with you, Dan. So I think Ellis Sims should have shown a little bit more conviction inside the box to get on the end of it. Ball's back on halfway with Liam Kitching, one of the summer arrivals at centre-half at Coventry. He came from Barnsley, began his career at Leeds United. Liam Kelly, as I mentioned, making his first start for Coventry since September. He's been at the club for... Seven years now, Liam Kelly had his injury problems during that time, but he sits in defensive midfield with Victor Torp. Ball headed up in the air and drops at the edge of the area. A bit of a wild swing at the edge of the box there for Coventry from Victor Torp. Scored in the FA Cup on his debut against Sheffield Wednesday and was swiftly nicknamed the Torpedo uh, by Coventry fans for the, happen, didn't it? for the quality of the strike. Now, Casey Palmer turns away from his man. Good challenge from Greenwich at the edge of the area. But now Hadji Wright's trying to burst through. There's enough back. It's deflected back into the path of Wright. Shot saved by Coverland. Out to Ellie Sims who drives it across the face of goal from the left-hand side of the six-yard box. And straight away, as he did at Portman Road, Lucas Coverland in the Maidstone goal is forced to make a save. Terrific stop from Coverland. We know that if Maidstone are to cause an upset tonight, he's going to have to be outstanding. And what a start to the match for him. It was brilliant from Hadji Wright. He started the move, little one-two. He gets himself into the box and then he takes a swing at it. He's only about nine yards out. He just reacts really quickly, the Maidstone goalkeeper. Excellent save. Michael Salisbury is the man in the middle tonight, our referee. 95 places separate Coventry City and Maidstone United. Ninth in the championship at the moment, Coventry. Four points off the playoffs after that defeat to Preston here on Friday. And they dropped out of the top six pack. Now down the right-hand side, Liam Soule is giving chase for Maidstone, but the ball is overhit by Rafe Brown. And will skip behind for a Coventry City goal kick. And it's all yellow and black away to our right-hand side in that south stand. And they're making so much noise, the Maidstone fans on mass. It's brilliant, nil-nil. Uh, oh, it is fantastic. Great atmosphere. It really turned out, and they're throwing their weight of support behind them. But, but the, the Coventry fans have turned out in force too. And I have to say, the players on the pitch have started at a high tempo. I talked about it pre-match. They've got to play quick tonight, Coventry, and that's what they're doing. Oh, what a challenge on halfway by Sam Corn for... Maidstone United and he's won a free kick which he's taken quickly to try and release Lamar Reynolds down the left hand side he gets there just ahead of Lati Bogier. keeps it in play on the far side and then wins a throw off the Coventry fullback nil nil nearly five minutes gone on Talk Sport 2 in the FA Cup what have already got into the final third on two or three occasions Maidstone they're, they're all about the pace aren't they in forward areas uh, particularly Lamar Reynolds we saw how explosive he was when scoring at Portman Road and that's a Bodier yeah, who doesn't always play at right back. I mean, he's someone that's versatile, can play centre half, he can play at left back, right back, or in central midfield. You sense he might have one or two uncomfortable moments tonight. Yeah, he played in central midfield on Friday night, in actual fact, Joel Letty Bodier. Yeah. I'm used to seeing him as a centre half in his time at Swansea City, former Manchester City Academy graduate. Balls in central midfield, corn. Just dummies to take it away from Hadji Wright and drift out to this near side, the Maidstone right-hand side. He's helped out by Liam Soule, who tries to just nick it down the inside right channel, asking Jacob Berkeley Akupong to close down Jake Bidwell, and he forces Bidwell to hit it against him, Akupong. So it's a throw to the Sky Blues level with their own penalty area, nil-nil. Well, it's not a low block, defended on the edge of their 18-yard box. Not yet, anyway, Dance. They're, they're proactive. <laughs> And they're really tearing into Coventry, looking to press at every single opportunity. They're pushing up right up 
and to the halfway line as well. It's in, in many ways, it's a, it's a slightly bolder approach than the one we saw at Ipswich. Lati Boggia trying to release Fabio Tavares down the right-hand side in a race with Kiprianu. And well done, Harry Kiprianu. He was about a yard behind Tavares, looked to have the beating of him for pace, but he caught up the left-back and did put it behind for Coventry's first corner of the game at the North Stand End, nil-nil. Yeah, rapid there, Kipriano. Remember seeing him at Southend United a few years ago, came through their academy, limited first-team opportunities. More as a midfielder then, actually. But, um, yeah, good turn of pace to overtake Tavares there. You're going to tell me he was quicker than you? <laughs> yeah, I think he was. <laughs> I was all right over five yards. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Talk with the corner for Coventry. It's right across the face of goal. Good claim by Kovalan. Falling backwards inside his six-yard box and he immediately clears from hands and it gets up to halfway, but that is well defended in the end by Jake Bidwell and Tavares has it again for Coventry. Plays it across the field to the inside left channel for Hadji right. Now Palmer takes over. Bidwell, left-hand corner of the box. Lovely first-time cross. Cleared away by Kipriani on the half volley. Somewhat uncertainly. And then back came Manny Duku just to take it off the toe of Liam Kelly and it drifts out of play for a Coventry throw by the corner flag on this left-hand side, nil-nil. Well, Liam Kelly, he thought he had all day there. He's taking his time. This is this is as frenetic a start to a game as I've I've seen in a while, actually. The ball is a, a genuine hot potato. And Maidstone are really tearing after. The ball's gone into paracetamol at half-time. <laughs> They're tearing after the sky blue shirts. It's Seven minutes gone. <laughs> it's Coventry City nil, Maidstone United nil. Championship against National League South, let's not forget. Jay Bidwell looks to send Hadji right away down the left-hand side of the box, hits it against the defender, but the flag rightly has gone up. Looked to me that the American was offside when he received it down the inside left channel. Seven million plus Hadji Wright cost from Antalya Sport in the Turkish Super League, ostensibly seen as the replacement for Victor Gyokarez after he went to Sporting last season. Yeah, and no. he's getting going now. Had a bit of a nervous start to his Coventry career, had you right? Yeah, he did. Victor Jokeres, how well has he done, by the way? It's been valued at upwards of £50 million now. I was going Incredible. to say, Chelsea offered 100 million for him, yeah? Well, you know, that potentially <laughs> might happen. But look, had you right and Ellis Sims both cost a lot and, and, and haven't delivered maybe quite as much as Mark Robbins would have expected. Kipriano gets the ball stuck under his feet but still manages to get the ball clear. Greenwich will get it further clear for Maidstone, tries to get up to halfway, but it's won back by Liam Kelly. Palmer tries to play it through for Sims, Sims onside, Sims scores! Coventry ahead, inside nine minutes. Casey Palmer involved, and it was played through to Ellis Sims, who broke the line of the Maidstone defence, and it hasn't taken Coventry long to assert their authority, and he holds up a shirt for his teammate Tatsuhiro Sakamoto who got injured on Friday night, Ellis Sims. But it's his goal that puts Coventry ahead against the non-leaguers. Coventry 1, Maidstone 0. Yeah, Sims, the party pooper, but he does not care. It's a brilliant goal, actually. Casey Palmer has been bright in the opening stages, slips a gorgeous little through ball into the box. Nice run from Sims, and he never looked like missing. Took the shot on nice and early before Kovalan could get set and just slams it into the back of the net. And that will settle a few nerves. 1-0 to the Sky Blues then, and Ellis Sims has his seventh goal since moving from Everton for just shy of £4 million in the summer. Had a loan at Sunderland at the start of last season when he was forming quite a decent partnership with Ross Stewart and then was recalled. Now here's Maidstone trying to respond with uh, Berkeley Acupon. Ball played up in the air, drops in the centre circle, and Sims can't get hold of it. Tavares can, plays a 1-2 with Sims and receives it inside right channel but can't get past Kiprianu and then Kiprianu turns back towards his own penalty area, just jinks it infield, Sam Bone will turn and try and get away from Tavares and he clips it left footed up to the halfway line, Duku holds it up well, Korn works it out to the left hand side, will Reynolds keep it in play on that far side? No, it just drifts away from Lamar Reynolds and Coventry have a throw. Ten minutes gone, one nil. Yeah, well, they, they came back from the disappointment of conceding that equaliser, didn't they, at Ipswich, um, to, to retake the lead in the last round. So this shouldn't destabilise them too much. It's not the start they wanted. Of course, they wanted to keep that clean sheet for, for longer, but they've just got to regroup here and stay in the game. Coventry smell blood. They look really hungry, I have to say, the home side, to, to put this game to bed 
as early as possible. Can Maystone thwart them? Sam Bone in the centre circle, strokes it at left to Lamar Reynolds, who'll be up against Lati Bodier. Left-hand corner of the box, Reynolds for Maidstone, gets to the byline, checks to cross, feints onto his right, pulls it back to the right-hand side of the box. Liam Sol guides it down, Sam Corn wanted to take a shot, brilliant interception by Casey Palmer, but it's back out on the Maidstone right wing. Liam Sol feints to cross, goes on the outside of Bidwell to the byline, pulls it back right-footed just over the head of Duku. Brilliant defensive header by Lati Bodier to guide it out of play for a Maidstone throw on the far side. Coventry 1-0 up. Superb from Liam Sol on this right wing. He turns Jake Bidwell inside out. He steps one way, drops a shoulder, goes on his outside and the cross is excellent towards the far post. Little touch for Kiprianu. Cross the face of goal and is turned behind by Thomas for a corner kick and Maidstone United, having gone behind, are responding well. Corner kick to the Stones. Wow, the flag's gone up, so it's an offside in ah. the end. But what a good response from the non-leaguers. They haven't let their heads drop. They've been very positive in everything that they've done in these opening 12 minutes or so. Yes, they're one goal down, but very, very... They're playing with a lot of belief that they can come here tonight and score goals. Souls won the ball back for the visitors. Back to the halfway line and... Bone will win a throw-in off Casey Palmer, who's playing in that number 10 position for Coventry, which he was doing in the early part of the season whilst Callum O'Hare was getting back to full fitness. O'Hare, now fully fit and has been brilliant since his return, but he's on the bench tonight for Coventry. But Palmer's been a very important part of Coventry City's creativity this season. Here's Sims, the goal scorer. Works it out to... Fabio Tavares on the right wing, moves into the Maidstone half of the field, just checks his run for a moment and slides it back to Lati Bodier. Infield for Kelly. Kelly looks early for Casey Palmer in the centre of the half, gets away from his man, slips in, Ellis Sims again! 2-0! Same combination, same result. Ellis Sims puts it in with his left this time, beating Kovalan, nestled in the far corner. A brilliant brace from Ellis Sims to settle any Coventry nerves. And Maidstone have it all to do in the FA Cup. It's Coventry 2, Maidstone 0. It's a repeat, isn't it? Casey Palmer slips a gorgeous little through ball into the box. And this time on his left foot, Sims lets it go across his body and angles it into the far stick. It is a beautiful finish from Ellis Sims, who is not in the mood for any kind of upset tonight. So, now it's eight goals in next to no time for Ellis Sims as a Coventry City player. And Hadji Wright was on the scene as well there when Palmer played that lovely through ball for Ellis Sims to finish. A very cool, low finish. So I think he's on a perfect hat-trick. Right foot, left foot just needs a header now. He does, and you, look, the way he started this game, he looks so sharp, so hungry. He looks to me as if he's slimmed down a little bit. Ellis Sims from earlier on in the season. He looked a little bit bulky to me, mm. sluggish in his play. He looks really lean here this evening, does Ellis Sims. And the runs that he's made to get on the end of those two perfect through balls from Palmer have been outstanding. Made 11 Premier League appearances for Everton after being recalled last season. Ellis Sims was at the eye of the storm, the fans' eye at the way Everton were performing. And here come the Sky Blues again, 2 0 up and buzzing. Bidwell in space down the left hand side of the box, chips it to the far post just beyond Hadji Wright, came off the top of his head. And Kiprianu trying to protect it down by the corner flag on the far side of the field. Wright is all over him like a rash, and in the end, he hits it against Tavares, does Kiprianu, and wins Maidstone United a goal kick. Coventry 2. Maidstone nil. We've played a quarter of an hour on TalkSport 2 in the FA Cup. Yeah, Mark Robbins will be thrilled with the attitude of his players, the application. They've set about this awkward task with relish, haven't they? They, mm. they look like they're really up for it. They're determined to enjoy themselves tonight, Coventry's players. And they couldn't have got a, to a better start. 15 minutes in, two goals up. And enjoying their football. The corn for Maidstone. Nods it on from the halfway line, but... Bidwell swiftly into possession. Palmer, some neat foot feet from him on halfway. Floats the ball into out, looking left to right for Fabio Tavares, but it was well watched by Kipriano, and he headed it back to his goalkeeper, 
Kovalan. Nice touch from Ellis Sims to hold up that number seven shirt for his teammate. I mentioned Tatsuhiro Sakamoto, who picked up a very serious, I think it was a pelvic injury he picked up here on Friday night. And I think he's going to be out for a while. And that will be a blow to Coventry City's playoff aspirations because he's been a terrific part of that right-hand side for Coventry this yeah, season, Adrian. I think he has, yeah. I think him and O'Hare are the two most creative players that Coventry have, and, and he'll be sorely missed. But it goes to show the, the camaraderie. Oh, Liam Sol goes down at the edge of the area. No free kick, says the referee. Kitchen was the man that was closing in on him. Howls for a free kick from the fans away to well right in the south stand, but they have it back. Rafe Brown for Maidstone. Swings across into the area, headed out by Thomas, chested down by Tavares, but he's set upon by two Maidstone players. And now Sam Korn works it out left to Kiprianu. Just about the midway point of the Coventry half. Reynolds trying to turn inside two Coventry players in all sky blue tonight, Coventry. And Palmer's looking for Sims again with a through ball, but this time... Lucas Kovalan's starting position is that good, he's able to pick it up long before Ellis Sims got anywhere near him. 2-0 Coventry. Yeah, he was ready for that, wasn't he? The Maidstone goalkeeper, very high starting position. They are holding a pretty high line here. And they've just given up possession there. Sam Bone allowing Coventry to win it back. Tavares down the right-hand side, lovely little shot pass. Casey Palmer trying to send it from the byline across the face of goal. And it's put behind for a Coventry corner. And Maidstone are really under the pump here. 2-0 down and facing another cough corner. Right. They wouldn't have expected an easy night, Maidstone. But maybe they would have hoped for something a little bit more sluggish from Coventry. It, this, is, this is lightning fast from the Sky Blues. That was great from Tavares. Little back heel into the box for Casey Palmer, who's been outrageously good. Corner for Torp on the right-hand side in the northeast corner. Drills it deep to the far post. Thomas gets his head in it. Drops on six yards. Lati Budget trying to get a half volley goal, which it was smuggled away by the back line for Maidstone. Comes out to Palmer. Goes for goal ambitiously from fully 40 yards out. And Maidstone clear their lines. Liam Sol won't keep it in play on the halfway line over on the far side. And it'll be a throw to Coventry City. Over on Talksport, they're underway at the London Stadium. And West Ham United already have the lead against Brentford. Jared Bowen makes it West Ham 1, Brentford 0. Commentary on that match over on Talk Sport right now for the London Stadium. I think it's Sam Matterface and Danny Murphy with you along with Adrian Durham in the East End here. In the Midlands, it is Coventry City 2, Maidstone United 0. With 18 minutes gone in this fifth round FA Cup tie. Two goals in quick succession from Ellis Sims. Two in five minutes for the former Everton man. Balls back with Liam Kitching. Bobby Thomas now receives it, the other Coventry centre-half. Just shy of the centre circle, inside his own half. It's back with Kitching once more, just exchanging passes. They're not pressing quite as high at this point, Maidstone United. Sitting a little deeper, allowing Coventry to have it up to the halfway line. Lati Baudier guides it back infield from the halfway line to the two centre-halves. All very calm and composed. Coventry last made the quarter-finals of this competition back in... The 2008-9 season, they were a championship side then as well. They lost to the eventual winners, Chelsea, here by two goals to nil. It's 4-4-2, really, for, for Maidstone United. They're, they've come here and tried to be brave. Maybe that's been part of the reason they've, they've been undone so easily early on. They've come here to score goals tonight. But at the moment, they're not really seeing too much of the ball. Coventry just popping the ball around, saying, saying to Maidstone, well, we're 2-0 up, you've got to come and get it off us. Right, on halfway, has to go back into his own half of Coventry and find Bidwell. Applause for Mark Robbins as Coventry worked the ball from left out to the far right-hand side of the far side of the field from us. Torp just gets dispossessed by Berkeley Acupon. And Kipriano, the left-back, down in his own dead ball line, chips the ball in field. It's lofted towards halfway by Sam Bone. Won't find Reynolds, though. Liam Kelly being closed down by Sam Korn, but the ball's played through to Palmer. Good skill initially from Karma, and then oh, a shot, a clearance <laughs> from George Fowler that hit Reese Greenwich on the top of his head and looped up and very nearly dropped under the crossbar. <laughs> he went behind in the north stand then for another Coventry corner, 2-0. That, that would have been a contender for own goal of the century, wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, that would have been incredible. His teammate smashes it straight into his forehead. 
and it, and it comes off him and it almost sort of lands on top of the crossbar. Really, really um, uncomfortable moment for him. Another Greenwich. corner from the right-hand side for Coventry. 2-0 up against Maidstone. Torp with the corner. Again, drilled to the far post. Kitchen goes up, but so too does the keeper. Lucas Covalan holds onto it for Maidstone. 2-0 here. 2-0 at the London Stadium as well. Jared Bowen scored two in two minutes to put West Ham 2-0 up on Brentford. As forward come Maidstone and Lamar Reynolds has won a free kick. He was taken down by Liam Kelly. So the free kick is Maidstone's about 30 yards out. Applause from George Elikobi for his keeper, Lucas Covalan, for the quick distribution that set up that move downfield that's led to this free kick for the Stones. About 30 yards out, 2 0 Cov. It's in a great position, and Lamar Reynolds did great to draw the foul. There's one player for Coventry that hasn't started the game that well. It is Liam Kelly. He's been caught on the ball once or twice, not moving it quite as quickly as everybody else. Obviously, he's not had too much match practice lately, so maybe they'll look to play on him. Jacob, Jacob Berkeley Akupon wanted to take that free kick a little too quickly for the referee's liking. So it's about 35 yards out to the right of centre and looks like Sam Corner's taken over duties. Berkeley Akupong's moved away. Corn swings it to the far post. Greenwich tries to head it across the face of goal. Brilliantly defended by Bobby Thomas who comes back onto the field of play as Sims works it up to Tavares on halfway and Coventry try and counter but Tavares is dispossessed by Berkeley Akupong. And Maidstone have it back just inside their own half on this side here with George Fowler back to his keeper, Covalan. 2 0 to Coventry if you're just tuning in midway through the first half of this FA Cup time, Talk Sport 2. Adrian Clark's alongside me tonight. Yeah, look, they're 2 0 down, but they're still trying to play football the way that they want to play under George Ellicobi. The keeper goes long now, but we haven't seen a lot of that so far. You know, looking to play through the thirds to get it wide at every opportunity. Nice to watch, Maidstone, but. They've just got to stay in the game for now, not do anything silly. You don't have to chase too hard to get that, that, that goal back right now. Um, but look, if they concede again, it really would be game over for them. So they've got to be careful here. Well, Coventry did put six past Oxford United here in round three. Really put the use to the sword. And then after a 1-1 draw at Hillsborough in round four, they scored four against Sheffield Wednesday here in the replay. So they're used to finding the back of the net in this stadium, in this competition this year, and they're 2-0 up already. You're listening to Coventry against Maidstone in the FA Cup on TalkSport 2 with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup. 18+, plus. please drink responsibly. Ian Danter and the former Arsenal winger Adrian Clark, your team here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Cov in possession with Torp. Up to the halfway line and Tavares tight to that far touch line. Tried to slide it down that touch line for the on-rushing Lati Budier, but it's gone straight out of play for a Maidstone throw. 2-0. Yeah, one thing that looks really noticeable from a tactical perspective is, is the width that Coventry want to play with here. You've got Tavares on that far right-hand side, had you right on the left. When Coventry centre-backs have it, both have chalk on their heels. They're looking to make the pitch feel as big as they possibly can and what that's doing is creating more space in that central area for Casey Palmer to get on the ball and do his thing and of course with two excellent assists already he's been the game's most dominant player Ball's inside the Coventry half and the Sky Blues have it with Bobby Thomas he'll lay it off to his keeper Ben Wilson under pressure from the back line always giving it away. And here's Lamar Reynolds just inside the area, right-hand side for Maidstone. Gives it in field to Corn. Didn't fancy the shot there, Lamar Reynolds. It's been worked out to Rafe Brown. Now George Fowler with a lovely deep cross all the way to the far post. Brought down by Liam Sol. Going to get it on his right foot. He can, and he's driven it over the bar. Sol from a tight angle. And it's gone out for a Coventry goal kick. We've got 20 minutes to half-time. Coventry City 2, Maidstone United nil. Well, that's pretty good from Maidstone United. We'll head back to the CBS Arena very, very Left shortly. At the moment. Well, we seem to have uh, had a slight technical hitch at the other end. Apologies if you lost us for a few seconds. But we appear to be back with you on TalkSport 2. Apologies for that. It is Coventry City 2, Maidstone United 0. Balls with 
Rafe Brown, who lobs it forward, asking Reynolds to give chase. Headed away by Kitching. Headed back towards halfway by Bidwell. And then Torp. Looks to set Sims away inside left channel. Has he got the beating of Brown? He just gets to the ball ahead of Brown. Works it infield to Torp. We tried to touch it around Reese Greenwich. But Greenwich stood firm and won it back for Maidstone. Brentford have a goal back at West Ham over on TalkSport. West Ham 2, Brentford 1-0, Mopai. So three goals there and two here that have commentary in control. But just signs, Adrian Clark, that Maidstone can keep hold of the ball and might cause a few problems. Yeah, I agree with that. I really do. They've been so positive. They had, they've not let their heads drop at all and, and they're looking to go out there and hurt this Coventry side. Look, limited opportunities. You know, that shot from Seoul a moment or two ago, not, not too many efforts, but they're playing with intent. Look, you see it there. The centre-back comes out, wins the ball, and they launch an, uh, well launch played a counter. by Sam Bone. And now Seoul up to the edge of the area. Dooku gets it on his left. It's blocked at the edge of the box. Reynolds lays it off to Korn. Korn just tries to chip it to the far post for Seoul. But it's won back by Casey Palmer, who tries to out-muscle Korn. And now he's brought it away. Casey Palmer, only Sims ahead of him. And then Hadji Wright moving up on the left-hand side. Palmer finds Wright inside the area, left-hand side. Cuts onto his right, gets the shot away, and it's blocked behind by Brown for a Coventry sauna as the Sky Blues quickly turn defence into attack. And they win a corner kick away to our left, 2-0. Well, the downside of being so positive is that you will leave holes and you'll leave space, and, and that's what Mason have done in this first half so far. Coventry have had some really swift attacks. They've sliced through them at ease, and... And Casey Palmer, once again at the heart of that attack, holds off Korn brilliantly, releases right down the left, and his shot's blocked for a corner. But, yeah, it's, um, it's a cracking game. It is, very enjoyable game. Coventry on top. 2-0 they lead, and they have a corner just down to our left-hand side in the northwest corner. But before Victor Torp can take it, referee Salisbury's gone into the absolutely jam-packed six-yard box just ahead of us to our left. I have a word with one or two individuals paces back to the edge of the area of the referee blows his whistle Torp right footed in swinger from the Dane into the near post flicked away and behind for another corner it was Rafe Brown that got the important touch I think Coverland would have caught it had he not got the touch but Coventry will happily take the corner anyway 2-0 yeah he did, didn't look too convincing there Coverland but I think that's because the touch came unexpectedly it was a good delivery from Torp He's getting an excellent reception as he goes over to that, that far side. You can see the tactic, can't you? Certainly for the last one where they pack that six-yard box. This is an outswinger, but it looks to me as if he's going to drive this in. That's what he's done with the last few from that northeast corner. Here he comes again, Torp, right-footed. Actually swings it into the near post. Hadji Wright got a touch, and it actually came out of a Maidstone player. Another corner in very quick succession to Coventry City on that far side once again. So Torp will place the ball in the quadrant only one Coventry player in the six yard box for this and that's Liam Kitching Sims and Lati Bodier at the edge of the area in it comes to the near post looking for Thomas who goes to ground good clearance out to the edge of the area Tavares fires it in on the volley and that's only a yard or so wide of Coverland's right hand post Maidstone goal kick Coventry 2 Maidstone nil as we approach the half hour on TalkSport 2 yeah they're enjoying themselves the home team <laughs> he hits it really cleanly Tavares he's been bright hasn't he on that far right-hand side, he's been really nippy, heavily involved in, in, in most things that Coventry have done. He's probably five or six yards wide in the end, but it was, a, it was an ambitious but, but decent effort. That's Adrian Clark, you can hear, alongside me, Ian Dancer at the Coventry Building Society Arena. We've got three live games for you tomorrow across the network. First of all, England's women against Italy in a friendly from five o'clock here on TalkSport 2. Leanne Sanderson, former England women's striker, will join... Joe Shannon for commentary of that one. I'll break off for a minute as Maidstone have won it back. Played up to Manny Duku at the edge of the D with his back to goal. Gives it back to Berkeley Agupong who tried to work it back to Duku. But Coventry get it clear. Back goes Rafe Brown trying to outmuscle Sims, but Sims gets his body in between Rafe Brown and the ball and wins it back. Palmer, lovely flick in field to get Tavares away. Tavares was caught. But the referee says play on because Coventry still have it with the influential Palmer. Again, he looks for a through ball to Sims. This time, it doesn't come off. Tavares has stayed down. That's why the boos are what you can hear ringing around us here. Coventry still have it. Lati Bodier goes down. 
clipped by Berkeley Agupong. Free kick to Coventry, 35 yards out. And Tavares might now get some treatment. 2-0 Coventry. Yeah, ref was getting a little bit of stick there because I think the Coventry fans felt that Tavares was, was badly hurt. I think he's going to be OK. Might not even need treatment as it happens. He's up on his feet. Yeah, he's just maybe winded a touch. But look, they've got themselves a free kick thanks to Latibody Air. And this is, this is in a good area. Sort of 35 yards from goal. It's going to be a right footer. Yes, to the right of centre, so it favours the delivery from Torp, bending it away from the goalkeeper. Thomas and Kitching are pulling away to the far post, nearest to us, being watched by Duku and Kiprianu in the Maidstone defensive ranks. Maidstone holding their line at the edge of the 18-yard box as Torp stands three paces from the ball, comes up to it now, right-footed, delivers it low into the area, right touches it down, not sure whether he was trying to guide it down to Ellis Sims, that's what nearly happened in the end, but it just dribbled behind for a, a goal kick. I was telling you about the commentaries we've got tomorrow night. So after England women against Italy in a friendly at five o'clock, we'll be straight off to Ewood Park. I'll be with Courtney Sweetman-Kirk for Blackburn against Newcastle in a fifth round tie. 7.45 kickoff on Talk Sport 2 and over on Talk Sport at eight o'clock tomorrow night. Luton against Manchester City. Jim Proudfoot and Scott Minto at Kenilworth Road for that game, along with Adrian Durham. Ball's on halfway for Coventry with Liam Kelly. Kitching and Thomas now, the centre-halves combined. Finds Kelly once again. 2-1 to West Ham, incidentally, over on TalkSport right now against Brentford in that Premier League game. And I guess Brentford might be a little jittery given Everton getting some of their points back today with that ruling. So the 10-point deduction has become a 6-point deduction and Brentford are just that little bit closer to the danger area. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, there's a few that are drawn into it now. It's bad news for Luton, of course, but is that the end of the points deductions or will we see more? Who knows? How long is a piece of string? Tavares, right-hand side for Coventry. Went to throw off Sam Corton, off uh, Sam Bone, should I say. There's two Sams out there. It's confusing. Not really. Ball's back with Kitching in the centre circle. Now Casey Palmer, what a terrific first half he's had. Kelly, out to the Coventry right-hand side of the far side of the field from us. And Tavares, who seems to have run off that little knock he picked up when he was clipped in midfield. Kelly finds Palmer once again, just ahead of the centre circle here, rolls his foot on the ball to keep it away from Sam Korn. Kelly again, just lays it off to Lati Bogier, being very patient here, Coventry City. Not many holes that they can pick in that Maidstone back line for the moment. They try and work it through midfield and it's picked up by Sam Bone. Gets over halfway, plays it in field. Dooku tries to out-muscle Bobby Thomas, but Thomas wins it back. And then Kelly looks to play early over the top for Hadji Wright. Headed clear by Greenwich. Palmer onto the loose ball. Tipped out. Sims! Hat-trick! <laughs> Ellis Sims makes it three for him and three for Coventry City. And once again, Casey Palmer at the heart of it. An outrageous attempt from fully 35 yards out with a daisy cutter that Coverland did well to keep out. But Johnny on the spot with Ellis Sims to roll it home with a goalkeeper helpless on the ground. And Coventry City are coasting through to the last eight of the FA Cup against non-league Maidstone. Coventry three. Maidstone nil, Ellis Sims has a hat-trick. Well, as partnerships go, Palmer and Sims are in the mood, aren't they, tonight? Involved in all three goals, two fantastic assists for Palmer, and this one is an assist in all but name. It's a brilliant effort, 30 yards, he skimmed it along the deck. Kovalan, the hero of Portman Road, he lets the ball squirm out of his grasp and, and Sims was there, made no mistake. And I think it is game over now and you know, Coventry really can begin to enjoy themselves. The shot didn't seem to be on for Casey Palmer, but he didn't care. He let fly from the centre of the Maidstone half. I think he might have caught out Kovalan. You wouldn't blame him if he wasn't expecting it necessarily. He got down well, the keeper, and pushed it out, but there's that... That thing we always say about goalkeepers, do they push it out far enough to the side rather than in front of them when they're making those 
saves from long range efforts. Yeah, it was a bit of a spill, really. I, I felt anyway, he wasn't really in full control of it. It's a great effort, and it, the effort of a player that's insanely confident. Maidstone trying to respond as Kipriano sends a ball in from the left, and Lati Baudier sees it hit his chest and go out a play for a Maidstone throw on the far side. So those four or five thousand Maidstone fans to our right in the south stand looking pretty impassive at the moment not had much to cheer started the game at such a cracking tempo Maidstone but Ellis Sims with a hat-trick inside the first half appears to have put this game largely to bed but here comes Liam Sol into the area finds Lamar Reynolds left hand side but he's forced out of the area by Coventry defenders as it goes to the left-hand side and Kipriano into the area, Sol can't get the better of Palmer, who's everywhere for Coventry City at the moment. Well, Sims has got the hat-trick, but the best player on the pitch is Casey Palmer. And now Fabio Tavares gets away down the Coventry right. He's got right Sims and Palmer to aim at in the area, but he's trying to do too much to get away from Fowler, and Greenwich will clear for Maidstone. Bounces over the head of Reynolds on halfway, but he will pick up the seconds. Poor headed clearance from Thomas. And the Maidstone fans imploring their team to at least get a goal. Give their fans a moment, particularly at that end, that they're attacking in this first half. Eight minutes to the break. Coventry 3, Maidstone nil on Talk Sport 2. Yeah, first sign there of the confidence maybe draining out of Maidstone's players. They had the chance to, to run forward into 10, 15 yards of open space. And two or three players in quick succession just stopped and played the safer pass well Manny Duku just makes a back for Bobby Thomas and drifts down the left hand side of the area to receive the ball lays it off to Kipriano almost level with the area left hand side just tries to dart down that left channel for a moment but Lati Bergier holds him up so he has to go back to Fowler on the halfway line now Korn spots Brown in a bit of space again on the halfway line being pressurised by Hadji Wright so he has to go back to his keeper Kovalan thumps it right footed you'd have heard his right foot going through the ball there through our effects microphones here comes off the knee of Greenwich and out to the right hand side there's an offside flag up against the Maidstone player I think it was Duku that was coming back from an offside position so Coventry get a free kick remember the progression that Coventry have made they weren't that many steps ahead of Maidstone no. just a few years ago League 2 side win Mark Robbins came back in as manager. Yes, incredible progress. And, and, and the progress at the club is, has been amazing as well. The crowds have just shot up, haven't they? And really, it could easily have been Coventry instead of Luton in the Premier League. It was only a penalty shootout, remember, yep. that separated those two clubs. So, you know, they have their eyes on the Premier League and, you know, well, they've got a chance. 16th, 12th and 5th in their three previous seasons at championship level. So the growth and the improvement is there for all to see. Yeah, I, d I don't think they're going to grow again. I, th I think they'll do well to finish as high as fifth. I don't think they'll get fourth this year because the top four are so special in the championship. But, so that, but, but I also think he's reinvented this Coventry side really impressively this season. Now forward comes Kitching for Coventry City. Out to the left wing. Bidwell, first time cross into the area. They get it clear, made stone through a combination of Greenwich and Fowler. And then Korn holds it up inside his own half. Lays it off down this near side, but Sol is dispossessed. Torp bringing it in field for Coventry up to the edge of the area. Sims gives it back to Torp. Went for goal. Good save by Kovalan. Just plunging to his left-hand side to keep it out as Victor Torp tried to make it 4-0. Yeah, it was a decent effort, wasn't it? Just whipped it right-footed towards that far corner. On that occasion, Kovalan had taken a couple of steps that way just before he'd anticipated it nicely. Joined from Sarpsborg in January, Victor Torp. Danish player. He's got a whiff of the Sander Berger about him, hasn't he? Do you yeah. not think, Adrian yeah. Clark? Yeah, looking I can, at I'm, yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, he's quite quite an elegant midfielder. Classy and likes to get forward. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, I've heard good things about Torp and I mm. think he'll, he'll develop into a, a top player here at Coventry. Of course, there's players like Josh Eccles and the injured Ben Sheaf, who are an important part of the commentary engine room. Here's right up to the edge of the area. Palmer tries to get it under his spell, but there were two defenders converging on him. 
in Bone and in Kipriano between them, they managed to deflect the ball away from Casey Palmer and Kovaland could pick the ball up. 3-0 Coventry, five minutes to the break. Yeah, didn't he do well, Kipriano on the cover there? That was, he was in. Casey Palmer, it was brilliant again from Hadji Wright, drifts in onto his right foot from this left wing and just fizzes a pass into Casey Palmer. But the left-back, Kipriano, got across nicely just to, to get something on it. Reynolds, left-hand side for Maidstone, darting towards the dead ball line. Can he wrap his foot round the cross? He can. It's a great cross. He'll drop at the far post for Liam Soul. Lips it back across the face of goal, half cleared by Thomas. Then Fowler tries to get his foot in, and it's cleared away by Bidwell, and then he's caught late by Fowler, and a free kick is awarded to Coventry when they looked a little agitated at the back just for a moment as Liam Sol tried to lob the ball across the face of goal for a teammate. Couldn't find one, and Coventry protect their 3-0 lead. Yeah, they do. They seem determined to do that as well. But, look, Maystone have got themselves into good areas mm. in this first half, haven't they? They've, I think they've played higher up the pitch in general than they did against Ipswich, where it was more about soaking up the pressure and then going bang on the counter-attack using that pace. Mm. Tonight, they're looking to be a bit more proactive, uh, get bodies forward. And with that, and, and they have caused one or two issues, but with that, of course, comes comes the risk of leaving holes and, and Coventry have made them pay for that. Three minutes to the break. Coventry three, Maidstone nil in the FA Cup fifth round. And Coventry's next game is live on TalkSport 2 as well. And it's a great game in prospect. Live on Friday night, Hugh will be your host. It'll be West Bromwich Albion against Coventry at the Hawthorns. Make sure you're with us from 7pm for all the build-up to start your weekend right with some brilliant live football and a Midlands derby to boot. And remember, West Brom, one of the only teams to sign from Preston to beat Coventry here. I was here for that game earlier in the season in West Brom, and I don't know how they're doing it under Carlos Corberan with all the injuries and the wafer-thin squad they've got, but they're really making a fist of it to be in amongst it for the playoffs come May. But so are Coventry. But that'd be a great game to kick off your weekend, Friday night at the Hawthorns. Yeah, definitely. And, and look, if Coventry can, can beat West Bromwich Albion, which won't be easy, but if they can, then it would sort of draw them in, draw them a lot closer to them, and it would give, I think, the Sky Blues real belief that they can, um, can steal in and, and nick one of those spots. I don't think West Brom have got it sewn up yet. There's a little bit of work for them to do. Indeed so. Coventry have been in the top six in recent weeks, but... That defeat to Preston's caused them a bit of aggravation. Maidstone at the edge of their own penalty area, hook it clear through Rafe Brown up to halfway, but comfortably headed back into the Maidstone half by Thomas. But they'll just let the ball run out of play. George Elikobi with his cap on and his three-quarter length coat, barking out the instructions. It's hard to know what is half-time team talk cons consist of, really, Adrian? Yeah. Given that they're 3-0 down, to just, tough just talk to give. Yeah, he's got to get some confidence back into his players, I think. And I don't, I don't think he will want to change the positive mindset. You know, he wants them to, oh. to go out and score a goal. That's class, isn't it, from talk? Just pirouetting not once but twice to get away from Berkeley Akubong. Yeah, I just, just don't see him saying talking about damage limitation and and let's get everybody behind the ball i just don't think that's the way he wants to go about it tonight he's always urging his back four to to sort of squeeze up not get too deep torp inside left channel he's got bidwell on the overlap for coventry picks it up now level with the edge of the area gives it back to victor torp plays it infield to liam kelly bit of space he's going to go for goal liam kelly but it's comfortably saved by coverland on target but he just patted it down in front of him and made it look a regulation stop there, Coverland stays 3-0 to Cov, and we're edging towards stoppage time at the end of the first half. Yeah, needed a lot more power in the strike there from, from Liam Kelly. It was catching practice for the goalkeeper. Just looking at the, the match stats. We got 14 shots from, from Coventry, two from Mason. They've, they've equaled what they produced at Port Monroe, but the big difference, of course, is no goals this time around. Not yet, anyway. Three minutes of minimum stoppage time have been indicated by the fourth official just down below us, Andrew Kitchen, and we're into those three minutes now on Talk Sport 2. Coventry in possession, just shy of the halfway line. Torp just rolls it back five yards or so for his centre-half Kitchen, gives it back to the Dane, trying to play a slide roll pass over halfway that was intercepted by Berkeley Agupong, but... Coventry will protect the ball, let it go out of play on this near side, right in front of their manager, Mark Robbins, 
who returned in 2017, won the Football League trophy in April of that year, and then the League Two title in his first full season. 40% win rate since he's come back, because, of course, he had a spell here just over a decade ago before Huddersfield Town came calling. Yeah, it's just a great fit, and he is the biggest asset they have. They've got some good players, and we can see that this evening, but, but Mara Robbins is the, is the main man here. Palmer again trying to release Ellis Sims, this time from a bit deeper. Sims almost got onto it at the left-hand corner of the penalty area, but Rhys Greenwich was putting him under pressure, but then Palmer shows he can do the defensive side of the game well too and slides in to put an attempted pass upfield from Rafe Brown into the stands just to our right. Yeah, he's, he's just looked like a really hungry player tonight, Casey Palmer. Obviously, Calamo Air plays in his position. It's tough. It's tough for him to get regular football. And when you see him in this kind of mood, you think, well, how can this guy not get in Mark Robbins' first choice 11? Well, I think, personally, with Sakamoto out... Yeah, he's got a chance. I think, I think that side, the, the, the sort of right-hand side of a three that Tavares is playing tonight, I think that's a place where Casey Palmer can, well, more than do a job. Goodness me. Yeah. There goes the half-time whistle. In fact, the referee decided only two minutes of minimum stoppage time was worth playing. And Coventry City are fully in control of this cup tie. No potential for a shock, it seems, here tonight in the Midlands because Ellis Sims has scored a first-half hat-trick, but Casey Palmer grabs the headlines just as much with, effectively, three assists. Two slide rule passes early on in the piece to get Sims away with right- and left-footed finishes. And then, with ten minutes to the break... Palmer tried an outrageous shot from the middle of the Maidstone half, pushed out by Kovalan, who'd been so brilliant against Ipswich, but he could only push out that effort to Sims, who crashed the ball home for Coventry's third. One or two half chances for the Stones coming forward to our right-hand side, but the 5,000 travelling supporters to our right have had precious little to cheer, and I'll be very interested to know what they're talking about as they head down to the concourses for a pie and a pint at the break, because Coventry are as good as in the last eight. At the break, it is Coventry City 3, Maidstone United 0. Yes, that dream for Maidstone certainly slipping out of grass. Would have been something very special to beat Coventry City aside at 95 places above them in the football pyramid. It will now take a certified miracle. Uh, at the break, as you heard there, Coventry with the three-goal lead. Uh, Adrian, it started exactly the way that you suggested Coventry should start the game with that high intensity and they really pressurised Maidstone. They needed everything to go their way on the night. We knew that. They couldn't really have any errors. Do you have any issues with the way that they defended the first goal for Ellis Sims in the way that Palmer had no real pressure on him when he put that slip ball through to Sims who finished? Well, we, we don't have the benefit of replays here. So all I can go off is, is gut instinct really at the time. And, and obviously when... When two centre-halves get bisected by a through ball twice mm. within minutes of each other, I think you'll, they'll look at that and say, could we have been a little bit more compact? You know, it's not a great look, I guess. But I would prefer to say it's great play from Coventry. That tempo that we talked about, they were so intense. They were so on fire, really, in that first 20 minutes that they were they were near on impossible co to contain. Everything they did was, was razor sharp and... And it was too sharp for the non-leaguers, really. And, and Palmer in particular, that, that eye for a pass, slipping in Sims for the first two, just kind of killed, I guess, any any hopes that, that the non-leaguers had of, of winning tonight. Yeah, the first coming after nine minutes, the second just five minutes later. In between, we'd seen an actual really good response from Mainston. He didn't let their heads go down. Maybe it was the same after... The second as well, you felt like they were in the game and, and creating something. Oh, I've loved their attitude. I mean, there is no fear at all from Maidstone United. They've come here and they've said, well, let's not have any regrets. Let's just go for it. Let's have a bit of fun with it. Let's play attacking football as, as much as we possibly can. Let's get bodies forward and look to, look to cause damage. And they've, they've been in the final third a fair bit. They've had 35% of possession here. And they've looked pretty sharp, but they just haven't been able to find the quality to unlock the Sky Blues so far. But, but I, I like their intent, I like their attitude, but, but it does come with risk. And, and, and when players broken down, they haven't had enough men behind the ball. And, and Coventry have just broken and sliced through them 
you know, regularly in, in the first period. Yeah. I think they've had a lot of fun, yeah. Mark Robbins' team. Not a vintage evening for Lucas Covelin in the Maidstone goal as well. I think he could have done better with the second and third goals. Got down sluggishly for the second, I thought. The third one, he parries into the path of Ellis Sims. Do you feel like... You know, he'll reflect on those two moments as, as key in the game. Yeah, well, the only reason they're here is probably because of Lucas Kovalan. Yeah. So he doesn't have to beat himself up too much. I mean, he was unreal, wasn't he, at Ipswich Town in the last round? Look, yeah, I think for, you're being a, maybe a little bit harsh for the second. I get where you're coming from. I just think he took the shot on very, very early. Ellis Sims with his left foot and he guided it into that far corner. Um, but the third I would put down to, to the Maidstone keeper. It's a fizzing drive. It's, it's a wet pitch. It's skiddy here tonight uh, at the CBS Arena. But, but I think it was a spill. And, yeah. and, and Ellis Sims, you know, was Johnny on the spot to convert a nice, easy finish for his hat-trick. I mean, it's not, not very often that a player scores a hat-trick in 45 minutes. And really, you're saying, well, he's the second best player. It's remarkable, yeah. really. Because for me... Casey Palmer has been 10 out of 10 in that first half. Absolutely fantastic for him. Great news for Mark Robbins too. Um, just very quickly, George Elakobi now in that changing room. What, what message do you think he will have to his players? Um, I think he's got to say, he's just got to give them some confidence. And say, boys, it's not that bad. Look, you, we, we've, we've done this well, we've done this well. Excellent here. Bit more luck and we can, we can create some chances here. We're not done. I think he will just try and fill his players with a little bit more confidence. So I think being 3 near down at the break, they, they're going to feel demoralised. They might feel a little bit flat. He's got to somehow get into their minds and say, look, go again. We can we can, we can, can get even more pride out of this game. I don't... I just... The way they set up in this first half so positively, I just don't see how he's going to then change the message and say, look, boys, we're 3 near down. Let's, let's shut up shop and yeah. get everyone behind it. But I just... I don't feel that's what he wants from his team tonight. He'd, in a way, he'd rather lose, lose more heavily, but play with a little bit of attacking purpose so yeah it's, it's it's about it's about giving the players belief that they can do something positive in the second half i'm sure they will certainly want to give those fans that have made the journey up from kent something positive to shout about as well maybe it'll be all about getting a goal in that second yeah, half to send the, the yeah, 4800 uh, traveling fans home with something to smile about. Um, anyway, look, the tie's not over. Who knows? We might be on for an absolutely miraculous comeback. So there's 45 minutes on the way. Adrian Clark, uh, thank you very much. Ian Danter will be back uh, very shortly too. A reminder, over on Talk Sport tonight, it's West Ham 2, Brentford 1 in the Premier League. 40 minutes gone in that one. If you're listening on the app, just a simple swipe will do. You can head over to the London Stadium and then back to us at the CBS Arena. If you're at home, ask your smart speaker for Talk Sport 2. If you're in the motor... You've got TalkSport 2 saved. You've got to have TalkSport saved as well. So it's easy for you uh, to plenty of live football to choose from this evening. Uh, but so far, Ellis Sims is the man for Coventry. A first half hat trick. Looks like it's going to put the Sky Blues in the last day of the FA Cup for the first time since 2009. Will it be an absolute miracle? Unlikely, but we've got plenty more action and I'm sure more goals to come for you. At the break, it's Coventry 3 made to nil. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League and the English Football League. The Emirates FA Cup live on TalkSport 2 with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. You're walking home from nursery. Your biceps are burning. Your toddler's decided that he hates his pram and he must be carried. You, baby mama, are exercising. Thanks to your Samsung Galaxy Watch 6, you know you've been active for 146 minutes. And since it's paired with your Samsung phone, you know 27 of those were high intensity. Sure, you didn't go to the gym, but that sweat is still sweat. Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 for extreme lifeness. Compatible smartphone required. In our March draws, you could win a share of our incredible £17.8 million prize pot. We have guaranteed winners every day. And to be in every draw, all you have to do is sign up for a monthly subscription of just £12. 70% of postcodes across Great Britain are already playing. So sign up your postcode before midnight on the 29th of February for the chance to win. Good things come knocking with People's Postcode Lottery. PPL manage lotteries on behalf of good causes. 18 plus conditions apply. Play responsibly. Not available in Northern Ireland. Introducing the McSpicy and Frank's Red Hot Burger, featuring irresistible Frank's Red Hot Mayo, jalapenos, cheese, and our mouth-watering crispy spicy coated chicken. 
you lot ain't ready for this one. McSpicy and Frank's Red Hot, the hottest drop of the year. Until 12th of March from 11am, subject to availability. Frank's Red Hot Bottle, not available at McDonald's. Drive to Survive is back. To be a Formula One driver, you need to be able to switch yourself off from everything that is happening around you. Is he ready? Physically, mentally. Your position is under threat. When you get into that car, the noise goes away. Formula One Drive to Survive. Now streaming only on Netflix. At Co-op, we know those everyday essentials are important. So now... Our members will save more with member prices every day on things like bread, eggs, milk, broccoli and chicken. Sign up and save more at your local co-op. Subject to availability in-store, only £1 joining fee. See co-op.co.uk forward slash member prices, co-op group food stores only. PGA Tour, the Cognizant Classic, Thursday night from 5, live on TalkSport 2. Blasted high into the air, will it land softly? Oh my goodness! As the world's golfing elite go head-to-head in Florida. Hear full hole-in-one commentary of all the action, direct from the Palm Beach Gardens Resort. Will it get there, will it get there, yes, and it does. PGA Tour. Tour, the Cognizant Classic, Thursday night from 5, live on TalkSport 2. Live Super League, Sunday afternoon from 3 on TalkSport 2. Has he got the ball back? You right. bet he has. Here, hard tackling, full match commentary of Hull FC versus London Broncos. Let's get to the way this time. Chantra Sutcliffe slicing through and that's it. Game set and match Hull FC. Live Super League, Hull FC versus London Broncos. He's racing forward, goes 90 metres. Sunday afternoon from 3 on TalkSport 2. The FA Cup Live on TalkSport 2. Stay tuned for a miracle. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to call it now. Stay tuned for a miracle. We'll wonder if Maidstone can produce the comeback of a lifetime to put themselves into the last state of the FA Cup. They've got a mountain to climb, to be frank. Let's take a look at the halftime highlights on TalkSport 2 in partnership with Carling. The Emirates FA Cup Halftime Highlights on TalkSport 2 with Carling. The official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. And we are ready for the off on your home of the FA Cup. TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Right old racket around this stadium, Adrian Clark. It's magnificent. Tremendous atmosphere, a real sense of occasion. I cannot wait to see what unfolds. It's one back by Liam Kelly. Palmer tries to play it through for Sims. Sims on side. Sims scores. Commentary ahead inside nine minutes. Yeah, Sims, the party pooper. But he does not care. It's a brilliant goal, actually. Kelly looks early for Casey Palmer in the centre of the half. Gets away from his man. Slips in. Ellis Sims again. 2-0. Same combination, same result. Ellis Sims puts it in with his left this time. It is a beautiful finish from Ellis Sims, who is not in the mood for any kind of upset tonight. Headed cleared by Greenwich. Palmer onto the loose ball. Tipped out. Sims, hat trick. Ellis Sims makes it three for him and three for Coventry City. A hat-trick for Ellis Sims in the first half means it's Coventry 3, Maidstone United 0 at the break in the FA Cup fifth round live here on Talk Sport 2. And as I say, there is a mountain to climb for Maidstone. Will they at least salvage some pride and get a goal in that second half? It's coming up for you very, very shortly, but that was all thanks to Carling. The Emirates FA Cup halftime highlights on TalkSport 2 with Carling, the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Uh, chances at both ends in the Premier League for both West Ham and Brentford. Uh, chances spurned just on the verge of half-time. Still West Ham 2. Uh, Brentford 1. A big evening, I think, for David Moyes because a Jared Bowen double had put West Ham in front inside about 10 or so minutes very, very early on. Uh, and so if they were to be pegged back by Brentford in this game, who got a goal back through Neil Mopai, uh, that would be, put much more pressure on him in front of the home fans at the London Stadium. If you'd like to listen to it, it's over on TalkSport exclusively right now. We've got more live football coming tomorrow night, live here on TalkSport 2. Newcastle looking to book a place in the last day of the FA Cup. Or will the competition spring another shock with championship side Blackburn heading through to the quarterfinals? Tomorrow from 7.45, we'll find out. Here on the Talk Sport Network, we will always love the FA Cup. 
It comes back and smashed into the goal brilliantly by John Stack from the edge of the box. And Blackburn Rovers have earned a game against Newcastle United of the Premier League in the fifth round of the FA Cup. It's important we get back to, to winning ways as soon as we can. This exciting group of players, which I've seen over the over the course of the last 18 months, will certainly roll their sleeves up and make sure we do that. And Newcastle are folding like a pack of cards. After a performance like that, and you do get them, you want uh, a chance to respond very quickly and to get out of the system, and um, this is a good game to do that. He is going to be someone that hands the baton over to someone else if he doesn't win the baubles. The FA Cup, the oldest and the best. So Blackburn taking on Newcastle in the FA Cup fifth round is live on Talk Sport 2 tomorrow evening from 7.45. Plenty more uh, live action to come for you as well on Talk Sport 2 tomorrow. Before that, at 5 p.m., it'll be England's women taking on Italy in an international friendly. 8 p.m. on Talk Sport Luton facing Manchester City and more live FA Cup action for you across the network on Wednesday night as well. Here on Talk Sport 2, big game. Chelsea taking on Leeds United. Leeds after that win over Leicester City will be absolutely uh, joyant, joyous, if you like, in terms of their mood. Nine wins in a row. That is a club record. Um, and Chelsea, after defeat in the Carabao Cup final, will maybe have their moods on the floor. And and 7.45 uh, over on Talk Sport, Nottingham Forest taking on Manchester United as well. So uh, plenty live FA Cup fifth round action for you throughout the week. Let's head back uh, to the CBS Arena. Maidstone United trailing commentary by three goals to nil. And it might get a little bit worse in front of goal because changes are afoot. Let's head back to your commentary team, the former Arsenal and Stevenage midfielder Adrian Clark. And and talk sports Ian Danter. And we're back underway with Coventry in their sky blue kit heading for the south stand to our right where the Maidstone fans are. They're on the front foot with Callum O'Hare has just come onto the field as a half-time change for Hadji Wright. Probably one of the last players that the Maidstone players would want to see at this point in proceedings, Adrian Clark. I, I'd imagine so. Callum, Callum O'Hare is a tremendous talent. One of my favourite players actually to watch at championship level. Just a, a really gifted number 10. But yeah, had you right, had a good first half. I, I'd imagine mm. it's just a case of Mark Robbins thinking, you know what, I'm just going to give 45 minutes to Hadji and 45 to Callum O'Hare. Maybe it could even have been pre-planned. So O'Hare, who had such a luckless time with over a year out with injury, with a cruciate damage, missed so much football. But since he's been back in the Coventry side in the autumn, he's been right back to the pace of English football so quickly it's been terrific to see came through the Villa Youth Academy and if he looks a bit like Jack Grealish that's not an accident they were good mates getting through the Villa Academy I think they played Gaelic football for Warwickshire County together as well when they were boys Ga Gaelic, football. Gaelic football in Warwickshire wow didn't know that was um, that was a thing. Well, nor did I. <laughs> but he is, yeah, he, he's got a little bit of Grealish about him. Uh, Casey Palmer, by the way, look, looks like he's going to operate on the left. Yes. Um, maybe sort of almost like twin number 10s, really, with Callum ahead to the right of, of Sims and, and Palmer to the left. So Coventry, I'll run you through the lineups in a second. Maidstone in their yellow ochre shirts and black shorts and socks. They'll be heading for the north stand away to our left from our commentary position 20 or so rows back in the west stand here at the CBS Arena. In fact, I'll do the lineups now. For Coventry, it's Wilson in goal, Lati Baudier, Thomas, Kitching and Bidwell at the back, Torp and Kelly, Tavares, Palmer, O'Hare and Sims in attack. For Maidstone, Kovalan and then Brown, Greenwich, Fowler and Kiprianu, Bone, Berkeley, Akipong and Korn, Reynolds, Duku and Sol. And it's Bobby Thomas sliding the ball over halfway for Callum O'Hare up to Ellis Sims, who's already notched his hat trick, but he's been kept out there. Maybe he wants even more. As I mentioned, he started the night with six goals in a Coventry City shirt since his move from Everton. One more, and he's got double figures, which will be a lovely little milestone for him. Here is O'Hare, level with the edge of the area, right hand side. Coventry have had the ball pretty much exclusively since the restart. We're two minutes into the second half. Victor Torp near the right-hand corner of the penalty area. It's quite tight in there, lots of players from both sides, so it's worked back to Bobby Thomas on halfway. Now Lati Bogier plays a little one-two with Torp and looks back into the centre circle for Liam Kitching. Swung out to Jake Bidwell, just inside the Maidstone half of the field. Now Palmer stationed out on that left-hand side, as Adrian Clark was mentioning. 
Just flicks it in field to Victor Torp. West Ham 2, Brentford 1 is now a half-time score over on TalkSport, incidentally, at the London Stadium. That double from Jared Bowen and Neil Mopai with one back for Brentford. Thomas inside his own half for Coventry, just keeps the ball away from Manny Duku and plays the ball right to Lati Bogier. And under pressure from Berkeley Agubong, he works the ball back to Ben Wilson, who's sort of fighting for the goalkeeper's jersey with uh, Bradley Collins at the moment. Not sure whether Mark Robbins has quite made up his mind which one of those is his strongest option. Certainly Casey Palmer's a strong option, and he's worked it to Callum O'Hare. O'Hare goes for goal, and it's straight at the goalkeeper, Kovalan, who can just, again, pat it down in front of him. Probably didn't get the power in the shot that he wanted, Callum O'Hare, from just inside the area. With four minutes gone, second half, it's still Coventry three, mates to nil. Well, if you thought Coventry were going to sit on this lead and just knock it around for 45 minutes, you're wrong. They're very much on the front foot, looking for more goals, and... I mean, Callum O'Hare has only been on for four minutes. He must have had 20-odd touches already. You know, everything seems to go through him. He went for one of those reverse finishes that are kind of in fashion at the moment. Went for the near post, but Kovalan read it nicely. He's even got the Jack Grealish calves and the regulation socks half rolled what? down with 50 pence pieces as shin pads I or mean, something those, like those that. I mean, those shin pads are... I, I think might my, as well not be there. I think my six- or seven-year-old have got bigger shin pads than, <laughs> than Callum O'Hare. <laughs> I think my action man would have had bigger <laughs> shin pads when I was growing up. <laughs> anyway, Kipriano for, for Maidstone. Hooks the pulling field to Sol. Now Sam Korn for the Stones. Looks to the right-hand side and Rafe Brown. Neat skill on that far right-hand side from George Fowler. And it's worked back for Greenwich. Just inside his own half. Rafe Brown just looks to dart away from Casey Palmer. Does well down that right-hand side. Sol receives it in field, turns away from a couple of challenges, and now they're going to look for Kipriano. Lovely slide roll pass. Kipriano trying to lay it back to the edge of the area. Foot in from Lati Bogier, but it does go behind for a Maidstone corner away to our left-hand side. 3-0 Coventry. Excellent play from Jacob Barkley Agipong. He just sees the hole, and he plays the perfect little through ball in between defenders for Kipriano, who wins the corner. That was, that was quality football from the Stones. They do have a corner away to our left at the north stand end. Opposite end from where their supporters are willing Maidstone to score. Korn will send the corner in deep to the far post. Duku heads it up in the air from the six-yard line. It's half cleared by Coventry and O'Hare. Completes the clearance up to halfway, but it's controlled by Brown. Out to Korn on this near side, the Maidstone left. Gives it back to Sol. Now Lamar Reynolds slides it down the left-hand side of the box for Berkeley Agupong. Gives it back to Lamar Reynolds, gets his head up. Back to the edge of the area it goes. Left-hand corner of the box and Liam Sol. Kiprianu tries to get round Callum O'Hare. And he showed great tenacity, O'Hare, to win it back. And then Coventry give the ball away. Reynolds goes into the box, goes for goal and hits the side netting from a tight angle. The man that scored the opener for Maidstone at Portman Road. Just saw the angle tightening and tightening as he got possession. Level with the edge of the six-yard box and dragged his shot wide. Goal kick to Coventry, who lead 3-0. Really good stuff from Maidstone. Lovely little interplay up, back and through. And then the acceleration from Lamar Reynolds. Well, we saw that in Suffolk, didn't we, in the last round. He's caught pace, the boy. And he just exploded past Bobby Thomas. But the shot needs to go across the keeper instead. He went into the side netting. Liam Kelly for Coventry City. Finest Jake Bidwell, who's not had as many opportunities at left-back this season due to Jada Silva's arrival from Bristol City. So it's two former Swans at full-backs for Coventry tonight, and Lati Bodier and Bidwell. Here's Liam Kitching giving it to Lati Bodier on this near side, the Coventry right. Plays the ball along the net, looking for Palmer. Misses out Palmer, but it finds Ellis Sims, and then Palmer tried another defence splitting pass to get O'Hare away but Maidstone have it back and Berkeley Agupong's first on the scene to drive into the Coventry half of the field plays it infield for Liam Sol. Liam Sol tries to play a 1-2 with Reynolds at the edge of the box but Torp was wise to it O'Hare scurries toward the halfway line but flicked it too far over the halfway line for Ellis Sims to latch on to and Kovalan will tidy up at the back for Maidstone 3-0 Coventry yeah nice composed play wasn't it from Victor Torp he's very well balanced 
I think he, he looks to the kind of midfield that's unhurried mm. most of the time. He's one of those, a bit like Paul Davis back in the day, who could like pirouette on the ball, spin 180 degrees effortlessly. It's good left foot there as he puts Bidwell away on the he left. Just dinked Bidwell in behind down the left hand side, left hand corner of the box. Early crossing just away from Ellis Simpson into the grateful arms of Lucas Convalan, who bowls it out over arm immediately to Liam Sol. But his ball intended for Duku, comfortably cut out by Thomas. Now O'Hare for Coventry City. Midway point of the half. Flicks it that left to Bidwell. Acres of space for Jake Bidwell. Puts the cross in. Palmer tries to guide it in. <laughs> well, he got his head to it but he was falling over and having to twist his neck muscles to get the finish he wanted, and the header just looped up and was a comfortable catch for Kovalan. Talk Sport 2 in the FA Cup, Coventry 3-0 upon Maidstone United. Yeah, they're racking up the shots now, aren't they, Coventry City? That was a difficult one for Casey Palmer, coming in off that left, he's joined in as a second centre-forward, left the wing open, basically, for, for Bidwell to run into. Cross was good, but it was an awkward header for him. Brought away by Bobby Thomas for Coventry City as the Maidstone attack breaks down. Kelly and Torp exchange passes just shy of the halfway line. O'Hare, who boxer tricks on halfway, just drops the shoulder and gets away from Sam Corn for a moment. Has it again, O'Hare. Always gets his head up, looks to see what's around him. The, the difference with him on the pitch, though, is that they shorten up the passing and it's, um, it's a little bit slower in a way because, they, because they're, they're making probably four or five passes instead of the one that they were making in the first half when feeding Hadji Wright out wide or Tavares um, on the wing too. It's a, it's a very different Coventry City this half. Lovely cushioned header from Thomas to find Kelly and Kelly trying to release Tavares down this near side of the Coventry right but that's tidied up by Sam Bone. But Coverland's clearance just drifts out of play on this near side for a Coventry throw. We played 10 minutes of the second half. Coventry, three goals to the good. A hat-trick for Ellis Sims, if you're just tuning in to Talk Sport 2 on this Monday evening at the start of these FA Cup fifth-round ties. Good sliding challenge from Kiprianu, and away goes Manny Duku down this left-hand side for Maidstone United. Tries to get the cross in, deflected up in the air by Bobby Thomas, and he can't prevent the corner kick, despite his valiant efforts. So Mason have another corner at the North Stand in and a roar goes up to our right of anticipation from the travelling support. 3-0 yeah, Coventry. They're still dreaming of a goal, aren't they? The Maidstone supporters. This is corner. I think it feels like they've had about three corners, I think, at three, least yeah. already. Um, you know, they've, they've, they've bettered their shot count at Port Monroe. They've had three efforts. And it's Sam Corn with this corner kick, right-footed in swinger, deep to the far post. Greenwich heads it back across the six-yard line. It's hooked away again by the sky blue shirts of Coventry City, but comes back and guided out to Corn, who plays another lovely ball back to the box. Out comes Wilson and claims well about eight yards from goal. Good constant goalkeeping from Ben Wilson, and it stays 3-0 to the hosts. Yeah, really dominant. But look, you see the ambition of Maystone. Pretty much everybody went forward. They only left a couple of players back. You see Sam Corn had to sprint back there to get back into the left back slot they're, um, they're really chasing this goal to give the 5,000 travelling fans something to remember that's Adrian Clark alongside me, Ian Dancer, former Arsenal and Stevenage winger Kipriano guides the ball back for Kovalan who <laughs> he drops his shoulder not once but twice first to get away from Palmer and then to get away from Ellis Simmons as he, oh. Ellis Simmons as he snaked his way out of his own penalty oh, area quality. I'd have been very happy with that you know I was a winger who liked a drop of a shoulder and, <laughs> and that was impressive from the keeper yeah, Sims has almost had to pay to get back in <laughs> yeah, that was that was silky from Kovalan love it little moment for him what was your best FA Cup performance by the way Clarkie <laughs> Oh, was there one? It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't my luckiest competition, I've got to say. I did. I scored a hat. I, I scored. Um, the the one, one thing that stands out, I didn't have that many amazing performances. A few regrets, actually. A few misses. Mm. I missed a couple of bad misses for Arsenal against Sheffield United in the Cup. Talk Sport listeners join us with Coventry City. Three goals to nil up on Maidstone United of the National League South. The first half hat trick from Ellis Sims. Casey Palmer outstanding in setting up all three goals for the former Everton man. But Maidstone have just won themselves their fourth corner of the game at the north stand end to our left hand side. And uh, Jacob Berkeley Agupong's going to send this in a left footed 
in swinger for the Stones. Actually plays it short to Liam Sol, gives it back to Berkeley Agupong, who will just lift the ball to the edge of the area. But Sims, the hat trick hero, heads it clear. And really, the 95 places between the two sides, Adrian Clark, have been all too evident tonight. They have. Look, Coventry's attitude was absolutely spot on. They tore out of the blocks, didn't they? They're so intense in their opening spell. Casey Palmer unplayable in that number 10 role. Set up two goals for Ellis Sims, and then he got a third when Coverland spilled Palmer's shot. It, it was magnificent, I've got to say, from Coventry City. Mason came here tonight with a positive mindset. They came here trying to score goals. They've not been at all defensive. But really, it, it probably has played into Coventry's hands at and times. It's worth saying that's still what they're doing now. Even though they're 3-0 down, they're still on the front foot, and they've just won another corner that George Fowler's going to take this time from the northeast corner. In it comes from Fowler, headed out by Liam Kelly. Coventry, uh, commentary of this game rather continues over on TalkSport 2. We played nearly an hour, and it's Coventry 3, Maidstone 0. Ball played up to the edge of the Coventry box, but Kelly's there to win possession back. O'Hare, tight to the far touch line. Got Liam Sol at his back, but he's worked it back via Kitching to Ben Wilson. So I mentioned Coventry's next game is live on TalkSport 2 on Friday night. So again, just three days for Mark Robbins to get these things turned around. After that, home to Rotherham, away to Watford, home to Hull, away at Robbins' former side, Huddersfield, and then home ties against Cardiff and Leeds as we head towards the spring. You see, there are worse runs out there. I think they can pick up a lot of points, Cov, in that spell. Oh, strong run from Tavares, taking the ball into the area right-hand side, tried to swing it goalwards, and as he did, Reese Greenwich who's about two foot taller than Tavares, just leant into him. And Tavares shanked his shot horribly into the Maidstone fans behind that goal to our right. What a touch, though, on the run. That was absolutely sublime from Tavares. Pulls it out of the sky. But, yeah, the, the shot didn't match the touch that preceded it. 26,857 inside the CBS arena tonight. They did peg ticket prices, Coventry for this game to encourage families to come along and support their team and they've been rewarded with pretty much a full house including about 5,000 from Maidstone who were looking on as the Stones come forward Kiprianu trying to get the better of Torp at the edge of the Coventry box Berkeley Agupong steps in trying to show his strength but it's cleared away by Latibodier and now on that typical scurrying run forward is Callum O'Hare nicks it infield to Tavares Tavares into the centre of the Maidstone half where it's picked up by Casey Palmer O'Hare picks it up once again, inside right channel. Asks Tavares to come towards the ball and then plays it to his left for Liam Kelly. Bidwell in plenty of space out on the Coventry left. Plays a 1-2 with Liam Kelly, then slides it down the left-hand side of the box and suddenly Callum O'Hare's popped up over on that side of the pitch. Goes down under pressure from Greenwich and wins a free kick for Coventry City. As usual, Callum O'Hare's in about six different places at once for Coventry. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he really is everywhere. In a way, it's... It's a shame that Casey Palmer wasn't allowed to continue in the same vein, in that same position, because he was the dominant force in the first period, but now it's this, it's the O'Hare show. But, but look, I do feel that Mark Robbins is, is, is maybe having a look and seeing, well, can I play Casey Palmer out wide, mm. maybe even on the left, and, and have, um, have Callum O'Hare on the inside for the game against West Bromwich Albion? He's obviously looking at how that might... That might work out in the in the short to medium term. There's also players like Matty Godden on the bench who can be used in a variety of different yep. roles. Yep. But it's a free kick to Coventry, almost by the corner flag on that far side in the southeast corner. Victor Tork going to take it, just a one-man wall of Reynolds just inside the area. Tork whips it in at pace. Good headed clearance from Duku, headed it behind for a Coventry corner away to our right-hand side. 3-0 to the hosts. Yeah, that's that was devilish pretty much a shot Duku did ever so well and they've taken a short corner Torp and O'Hare combining it's given back to Torp now Casey Palmer heavy touch left hand corner of the box but he still finds O'Hare gives it back to Victor Torp moves in field just had the ball taken off his toe by Berkeley Agupong but back it goes to halfway retrieved by Bidwell and Coventry will move again this time down the right hand side the near side to us Lati Budgier finds one of the three Callum O'Hare's out there Plays it back in field to Liam Kelly. Honestly, I, I'm just tired watching him. Bidwell on halfway into just, the feet of Casey Palmer. Just thinking counter-attacks were the way that, that Maidstone undid Ipswich. And 
And Coventry just haven't allowed them any, have they? No. They've looked after possession well, have not really been loose and allowed Maidstone to turn the ball over. And as a consequence, they've not been able to, to use the pace of their forwards on those quick transition breaks. So I think Mark Robbins and his players deserve credit, really, for, for negating the underdog's big strength. Good skill from George Fowler on the right-hand side just to drop the shoulder and get away from Palmer for a minute. But Maidstone have given the ball up O'Hare on halfway, lays the ball off to Victor Torp. Neat half turn from Liam Kelly, gives Casey Palmer possession out on the left-hand side for Coventry, midway point of the Maidstone half of the field. 63 minutes gone on TalkSport 2, 3-0 to Coventry, as it was about five minutes before half-time when Ellis Sims notched his hat-trick. Tavares playing the ball in field to Bobby Thomas. Thomas, who came from uh, Burnley, has scored one for the club against Leeds United in December. It's another very good solid addition because Coventry's back line had to be basically revamped this summer. Yep. Yeah, well, a lot of the team did. And um, I think Mark Robbins has done a great job at remoulding it with a, a bunch of new players. It was always going to be a slow burner, I mm. think, because you can't have that many new faces and, and be top of the league, well, uh, you know, in September. I think that's why Carl McFadden stayed for the first few months and then left the club in the window. So... Players like Kitching and Thomas coming into the club had that continuity of somebody who knew what Robbins wanted in McFadden there. But now Kitching and Thomas are the first choice centre halves, along with uh, Louis Binks, who waits on the bench. Torp wins the ball back, midway point of the Maidstone half. Palmer to his left, plays it into Casey Palmer, beaten out by Covalant, right footed effort, probably a bit too close to the goalkeeper. One for the cameras from Lucas Covalant. But he made the save anyway, 3-0 Coventry. Yeah, really good again from Torp. He's having a terrific second half in the heart of the Sky Blues midfield. He wins the ball off Corn, drives at the defence, just slips Casey Palmer in on the left side of the box. But because he's so right-footed, Casey Palmer, he's, he's having to sort of angle his body. And the only real type of shot he could produce was the, the curler. And it was, it was relatively easy for Kovalan in the end. 25 minutes to go. Ian Danter and Adrian Clark with you on Talk Sport 2. I mentioned Matty Godden, and as if by magic, he's ready to come on as part of a triple change that Mark Robbins is readying down beneath us. Also, Milan van Avijk and Josh Eccles are going to be introduced. Born in Coventry, Josh Eccles. And here come the changes. And Ellis Sims comes off the field. He's got his hat-trick and gets a standing ovation from all around us here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. Richly deserved. He's looked so sharp tonight, Ellis Sims. Took his opportunity to get some confidence boosting goals and yeah, his finishing in that first half was, was just exquisite. And the other players coming off are Victor Torp and Casey Palmer to allow Messrs Eccles and Van Awey to get into the fray. Very popular member of the squad already, Milan Van Awey. Does yeah. lead the post-match celebrations. Yeah, he's a character. Fans. He is a great yeah. character. He scored some very important goals early on in his Coventry career, the uh, Dutch youth right wing-back. Yeah, look, he took off the stars of the show, really. Three of the best players, certainly, um, in the match so far. You know, they can all probably look forward to starts on, on Friday night. Which is live on TalkSport 2 at the Hawthorns against West Bromwich Albion. But meantime, there's still just less than 25 minutes to play here in this FA Cup fifth round tie. Liam Sol for Maidstone, 3 0 down the Stones, but still working hard, still pressuring and trying to find that avenue through to get a shot in at the Ben Wilson goal. Berkeley Agupon being forced back into his own half. There's a change coming up, triple change coming up for Maidstone as well. George Ellicobi is going to respond in kind to Mark Robbins. The former Gooners coming on that you will know well, Adrian Clark in Gavin Hoyt. Gavin Hoyt, yeah, no, he came through the ranks many years ago alongside with his, his brother Justin. Um, Justin played more first team games, but you know, they both had careers in the league. Yeah, he's coming on, but meantime, Callum O'Hare is coming on strong through the centre of the pitch, but Maidstone, I get it half clear, but lazy touch from Kipriano allowed O'Hare just to bundle off the ball. 
tries to guide his way down the right hand side of the box but Bone was back there for the Stones to get it clear Latibogier plays it with his instep down the, this near right flank asking for Van A. White here comes the change though for Maidstone United and coming off Rafe Brown is going to come off to allow the aforementioned Gavin Hoyt who joined in 2019 former Arsenal youth had spells at Watford and Gillingham as well also coming off is Harry Kiprianu that's to allow Chi Ezinolim former Welling player of the year to come on and uh, Bivesh Gurung who was born in Maidstone and came through at Crystal Palace he's going to come on for Liam Soul, I think if I'm right but that's who's walking towards us indeed it is Liam Soul that's coming off so a triple change made by George Alakobi with his side 3-0 down and a quarter of the game to go on TalkSport 2 yeah it's about giving players experiences as well isn't it at this stage you know in all likelihood they are heading out of the FA Cup with their heads held high Mainstone but it's an opportunity to reward some of the other players with the opportunity to play at a great stadium like this in front of a huge huge crowd you're listening to Coventry 3 Maidstone nil in the FA Cup on TalkSport 2 with Carling the official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup 18 plus please drink responsibly I'll just be getting the second half will have, well, been over for about four or five minutes, I imagine, at the London Stadium. West Ham 2, Brentford 1, live over on Talk Sports at the minute. And there's more FA Cup action tomorrow night. I'll be at Ewood Park with Courtney Sweetman Kirk for Blackburn against Newcastle. 7.45 kickoff. Luton against Manchester City is the offering on Talk Sport tomorrow night. That's an 8 o'clock kickoff, And then two more games for you on Wednesday night. Chelsea leads on Talk Sport 2 at 7.30. Nottingham Forest against Manchester United at 7.45 on Wednesday. Not forgetting as well tomorrow that we've got England's friendly against Italy, women's international. 5 o'clock kickoff here on Talk Sport 2. Joe Shannon and former England women's striker... Leanne Sanderson will be your commentary team to see how Serena Vickman's team get on in that friendly, having disposed of Austria fairly comfortably on Friday night. 7 2, wasn't it? Yeah. Very, very impressive. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good cup week. Got some good ties there, actually. You know, Forest, United, Luton, City, Blackburn tomorrow might fancy their chances against Newcastle. Not defending well at the moment, are they, the Magpies? Very true. Looking forward to being at Ewood Park with you for that one. 7.45 kickoff between Championship and Premier League. Here between Championship and National League South. It is Maidstone 3-0 down, but coming forward with Lamar Reynolds, trying to trick his way into the area. Got past one or two, but couldn't get past John Latibodier. It's gone out for a throw that it's worked back by Sam Bone all the way back to Lucas Covalant. Scored a playoff goal for Torquay United not that long ago. I'm trying to think where it was. Was it Meadow Lane against Notts County? Might have been. I remember. But was he up for a corner? Is that yes. what it was? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, Left hand side. Yeah, but he's a, he's a former Brazil under 20 international. He yeah. a bit of pedigree over there. Apparently, apparently he was teammates with uh, Coutinho. He was at day. Ashton Gate, my producer's just reminded me, not Meadow Lane. That's it. Not even close, was I? West Country or East Midlands? It's <laughs> about 150 miles between the two. <laughs> oh dear. Bottom of the class. You're forgiven. Yeah. Are you sure? 18 minutes to go. Coventry 3, Maidstone United 0 on Talk Sport 2. Bit of head tennis around the halfway line. Korn actually does really well to hook the ball down the left hand side, asking Duku to give chase. But Latibogier, who's stuck to his task really well tonight. At right back for Coventry City. Not a completely unfamiliar position for Lati Bogier to play, but he's looked very solid indeed. And that will please Mark Robbins greatly that he knows he can use him as an option going forward. Yeah, definitely. I think they've all played well, the Coventry players. Well, here's Van A. White down the right hand side, cross into the box, just evades Godden. It was cleared away 
by Bone, but comes back to Latibudier. Gives it into the feet of Godden. And then Vene White wins a throw off uh, Ezebonim on this near side. Near near second half dance. You know, they've, yeah. they, they, they've, they've stemmed the tide. Yes, they've created opportunities. Coventry have probably had more territory than they did in the first half. But I think they have managed to slow down their attacks a little bit. Kept them at arm's length. They haven't got in beyond the last man like they did in that first period either. So definite size of improvement. Throw in for Coventry. 17 minutes to go. And they get the ball in field. But then it's won back by Korn who hooks the ball up to halfway. Coventry win it back, but only for a, a short period of time. Just lobbed downfield by Hoyt, asking Lamar Reynolds to win the aerial challenge, but he was beaten to it by Thomas. Lati Bogier faints to go on the right-hand side, but then cuts back infield. It's given back to Coventry goalkeeper Ben Wilson. Inside the 18 box with him is Liam Kitching, who slides it up to O'Hare, who can turn and slide the ball out down the left-hand side for Tavares. Comes in field, Fabio Tavares. Quick feet, right-footed effort, comfortable save. It is near post from Lucas Kovalan. Three yeah. nil, it stays. Ah, it's just such good football. The pass from Kitching into the midfield was really, really incisive. Confident. I've been really impressed with them. OK, they're up against part-time players at Maidstone, you know, limited in terms of experience and ability. But I do think that, that Kitching and Thomas have been very, very composed. And basically, they just haven't made a mistake between them. It's been... It's been a near flawless performance from the both. Well, Kovalan has to come to the edge of his area just to head the ball away. Couldn't risk claiming it from Bones' back header in case he handled it outside of his 18 yard line. Greenwich at the back four, Maidstone will give the ball back to Sam Bone. Charlton Youth went to Republic of Ireland to continue his football education and came back to Maidstone about a year ago. Pulls out of play for a Coventry throw on the far side. We've got a quarter of an hour to go on TalkSport 2. I'm sure when I have a chat with Mark Robbins at full time, he'll be delighted with the way his team have responded, not only to the challenge of having the TV cameras here and being the party poopers, but also reacting to Friday night against Preston as Van White gets across into the box, headed out up to the edge of the area. Eccles goes for goal and it's nearly dropped on its way to goal by Kovalan. I think he was being quite casual there, the Maidstone goalkeeper. Good effort from the Coventry-born midfielder, but it stays 3-0 to the Sky Blues. Oh, it's been good, Josh Eccles, ever since he came into the first team. That was a terrific effort. Ball set up nicely for him, but he's still 25 yards out. Hits the ball sweetly, it's dipping. And Kovalan, not for the first time tonight, makes the save, but he kind of almost drops it. It's um, not, not altogether convincing. No. Right-hand side, Van White into the feet of Callum O'Hare. Busy at the right-hand corner of the penalty area. Slides it across to Liam Kelly. O'Hare again, just to the right of the D. Plays it out to the right wing and Van White Gets to the byline against the left-back and wins the corner for Coventry City in front of those Mason fans who are desperate for something to cheer as we enter the last quarter of this game. 3-0 to Coventry. Yeah, it's going to be one more sub, is it? Jay De Silva coming on. He made a mistake, didn't he, in the last game? Got caught trying to dribble out of his own box yep. against Preston, so he'll be eager to, to make amends. Well, straight swap for Jake Bidwell. Bidwell's edging towards 100 appearances at the Sky Blue. Rare start for him. And he's been solid and dependable, as he always is. And a high five with Jay De Silva. He came through the uh, the Chelsea youth. It won three FA Youth Cups actually uh, as three? a Chelsea player. Wow! He yeah, must have, must have played as a schoolboy then. But yeah, there was that golden era, wasn't there? Yeah. So Joe Edwards, I think, was in charge. That's right, Joe, who was until recently in charge at Millwall in the Championship. O'Hare brings the ball up to the edge of the area, tries to thread it through the Ivor Needle for a sky blue shirt inside the box, but Maidstone get it clear. And here's Lamar Reynolds on a rare counter attack for the Stones, tries to nick it through to Duku running through the middle, but it got ahead of him and bobbled through to Coventry keeper Ben Wilson 
and the counter-attack subsides. Yeah, well, that's the closest we've come to seeing a, a proper counter-attack from Maidstone, isn't it? And, and Reynolds is so quick across the ground. He's got the pace to hurt Coventry City, but didn't really have the support there. Hat-trick for Ellis Sims tonight. Hat-trick for Jared Bowen over on Talk Sport. West Ham 3, Brentford 1 of the London Stadium. Uh, Callum O'Hare somehow rides two challenges and plays it out left for Matt Godden. Godden gives it back to O'Hare. Quick feet from him, gets a shot away, dragged across the face of goal. Doesn't go out. It's going to stay in play. Is it on this near side or is Van Aewijk going to let the ball dribble out of play for a throw? He is. So it will be a throw and there is going to be another change for Maidstone and Manny Duku is going to come off and Riley Court is going to come on to replace him. And Duku, not long arrived, only joined in January, former York City player, went to Gibraltar in the summer, former Cheltenham player as well. Yeah, he's had some clubs, hasn't he, Duku? He's looking at his Wikipedia page, There's barely enough room for the list of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> he's played in all sorts of different countries. Um, well, he scored six and six whilst he was out in uh, Gibraltar, yeah. which prompted George Elikobu, who I think I wanted, I think he wanted to bring him in sooner. Yeah. Well, I'm not, not sure about the standard in that Gibraltar league. I have to ask Danny Higginbottom, he'd know. <laughs> Gibraltar international, Danny course, Higginbottom. Of course, yeah. Maidstone have got Dover next in the National League South as they try and get back in contention for a playoff spot. As it stands there, eighth, just outside the playoffs on goal difference. And they haven't really got games in hand. Despite this cup run, they're not way behind the eight ball in terms of games played, so... They do need to get back on the horse pretty quickly. Now, here's Kitching for Coventry. Tries to slide the ball into O'Hare at the edge of the area. One back by Gurung for Maidstone, but immediately Coventry win it back. O'Hare tries to turn it round the corner once more, but cleared downfield by Isanolim. And it's Bobby Thomas who'll tidy up at the back for Coventry City and plays a 1-2 with his goalkeeper. They've held their own, haven't they, in the game? Like, they haven't been blown away completely. Yeah, Coventry got that early lead and, and haven't looked back, but I still think they come out with, with great credit again. Maidstone United, they've shown resilience, good teamwork, no end of sort of spirit. It's still, you know, they're still chasing everything here. Mm -hmm. It's um, yeah, They've got a good group here. You can see that, George Elikobi and... You know, there'll be, there'll be better teams than Maidstone come here and get beat by more. Well, he's brought Riley Court on, who's an academy graduate at Maidstone. He's a midfielder, so Lamar Reynolds is now the man playing through the middle for the Kent side. And he might get it on halfway here. The ball bounced over Liam Kitching, but he was bailed out by Lati Bogier, who's back inside his own half, and he'll guide it back to Ben Wilson. Nine minutes to go here on TalkSport 2. Coventry City, 3-0 up on their National League South opponent. I mentioned Dover next up for George Elikobi and co. Then home to Jerry Gills Bath City. And St Albans also coming up at home. And Chelms for three home games in a row for Maidstone. And then not far to go to Dartford. And then a home tie against Western and Eastbourne to come in that congested National League South. But they're a big club in that league. You know, that was the that was as far as I sort of went down the pyramid and there are a lot of clubs that get, you know, a few hundred fans at that level, but they get a few thousand, Maidstone. You know, they're a well-supported group. Wasn't it uh, Chris Smalling at Maidstone? He was, player? yeah, he was at Maidstone, yeah. Came through the system before his Manchester United days. What did Louis van Gaal call him? Was it Mike? Mike Smalling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Down the left-hand side for Coventry, it's Jay De Silva. Lovely ball infield for Callum O'Hare. Left-hand corner of the penalty area. Keeps hold of it. Drifts in field. Then plays it up to the edge of the box, just beyond Tavares. Cleared away and well-chested down by Eccles. Bobby Thomas, urged to shoot, trying to nutmeg the defender at the edge of the area and get it through to Tavares. And then Reynolds puts enough pressure on the Coventry midfielders that they can see the throw. Eight minutes to go, 3-0 to Coventry. And George Elikobi just having another little conference with his coaching staff, including Craig Fagan. 4-1 to West Ham as well over on Talk Sport. Emerson has a fourth at the London Stadium. 
Yeah, big one for Moisey. Very big one for David Moyes. Now Tavares is away offside on the right-hand side of the area. He was put through by Eccles. So that's over on TalkSport. And a three-goal cushion for West Ham, as there is here for Coventry City in the FA Cup. Don't forget Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy with the sports bar at 10 o'clock on TalkSport. And can you imagine what Jamie O'Hara is going to be teasing Jason Cundy about after events at Wembley Stadium yesterday? I've got an idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Gary Neville's got people talking with that line, hasn't he? That was, uh, it was brutal, but... It's good alliteration, but was... I'm not sure whether it's particularly accurate. No. They could easily have won that game, couldn't they, Chelsea? They played, they played well. Um, they, Kelleher, Kelleher they stepped was... off in extra time. That's Ke that's that's Kelle the long of the short Kelleher time. Kelleher stopped them winning it. Yes. Um, but, yeah, losing, to, you know, with so many young players on the pitch at the end there, it was a little bit embarrassing. Here's Ezen Olim for Maidstone. Down the left-hand side, the substitute gives it back to Gurung. Good ball in, but it has it straight into the arms of Ben Wilson. There was nobody running across the line. Trying to put pressure on Wilson. He bowls it out under arm to Eccles. Turns neatly and sends a square ball out to Bobby Thomas. Up to halfway. Again, Callum O'Hare on the half turn. Let's the ball come across his body and then is able to feed it out to first Kelly. And then across it goes to Jay De Silva. De Silva gives it back to Callum O'Hare. Just laid off to Liam Kelly. He'll have enjoyed getting some minutes in his boots tonight. Liam Kelly. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he's improved. He's got. He's, he's, sluggish start but from, from sort of 15 minutes on he was absolutely fine and I think they've yeah they've all boosted their confidence tonight Coventry you know they are 95 places ahead of Maidstone you've got to have a bit of perspective here they've done what they should have done um, done what Ipswich should have done I guess in the in the last round but but I, I think Robbins will be so pleased with the attitude of his players they've been right at it that's Pivesh Gurung doing really well to stop Bobby Thomas getting over halfway as he tried to charge out from the back for Coventry City Talk Sport Breakfast back in the morning with Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoist and I know that Paul Heckingbottom until recently manager of Sheffield United will be joining the boys in the studio and I'm a big fan of Heck and I wonder whether Sheffield United would really have been any worse off had they kept him yeah no he's, he's he'll get a decent job Sooner or later, he's a very good manager. We'll wait and see, I think so, but we'll have to wait and see. Sometimes you can be out of the game for too long, even yeah. if it's only a few months. I agree. Look, what, Chris Wilder's a, a good manager there, but yeah, Sheffield United are no further forward since they let Heckenbottom go, are they? So he's on the breakfast show on Talk Sport tomorrow from 6 a.m. with Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoist back in tandem. Lovely ball down the left hand side for Callum O'Hare. Into the box for Tavares. The angle's tight. He gets towards the dead ball line, just runs into George Fowler. Fowler can clear downfield, just can't be brought out of the sky by Sam Corn. And Coventry now. have it back. They're flagging. <laughs> well, you, uh, you're right. I mean, this is where professional against amateur starts to show in the last few minutes, where the tired legs are all too evident. As Van A. White tries to go on the outside of the fullback. Oh, he's got him behind Van A. White. Right-hand side of the box, rolls it back to Callum O'Hare. Quick feet from him, got past two defenders but not past the third. I think it was Riley Court that got in there and put it out of play for a throw. Another change coming up for Maidstone United and Perry Yandolo, whose brother Ellis played a decade ago for Maidstone United, a youth team product. He's coming on for... Uh, Jacob Berkeley Agupong, who's really worked hard in the centre of that midfield. He has, yeah. A couple of really nice passes, a couple of good through balls from him. He's getting hugs from the coaching staff. Yeah, look. slap on his back from George Elikovi. <laughs> That's got to hurt. Yeah, it's, it's a back five, kind of a back six, really, for Maidstone now. I think they've got to that point where there's nothing really left in the tank. So up it goes to halfway for Coventry. Into the last three minutes of normal time on TalkSport 2 as Josh Eccles glides over the halfway line feeds it into Matt Godden lays it on for Tavares onside 4-0 that'll seal it Fabio Tavares scores for Coventry City all started with lovely skill from Josh Eccles and then Matt Godden split the defence with a pass 
Fabio Tavares did the rest as Lucas Kovalan came to block. And as we head towards the end of the 90, Coventry City get a fourth and Maidstone United's FA Cup dream is well and truly done. Coventry four, Maidstone nil. Yes, classy from Coventry. Really smooth. Eccles to Gordon, quick feet. Slips in Tavares, who's been bright all evening. And he just dinks it over the keeper. Really smart finish. He deserves that. He's worked ever so hard tonight, the youngster. It's only his second goal for Coventry City since he moved from Rochdale three years ago. And having had a couple of sub appearances in the FA Cup, he was been handed a start by Mark Robbins tonight. And he's got a goal. He'll be shoved solid with that. Well, Fabio Tavares, 23 years of age. So we're heading towards the last minute of normal time and Coventry have extended their lead. The 3-0 lead they had at the break. Yeah, they've been, they've been ruthless tonight, haven't they? Obviously could have scored more goals, but they've not given Maidstone a sniff. You needed them to have an off night. You needed them to be edgy or, or casual. You needed them to underestimate the minnows, but it's been the opposite. O'Hare releases Jada Silva, tried to play an early ball across the field for the onrushing Matt Godden through the centre. Put a bit of an anvil in his boot there from Jada Silva, and he fired it straight down the throat of uh, Lucas Kovalan, the Maidstone keeper. But Coventry come again in the last 30 seconds of normal time, down this near side, the right, and Milan Van Awijk, back to halfway. <laughs> Excuse me, and Bobby Thomas floats it down the right-hand side. But oh, bit of a shank from Sam Bone as he tried to clear his lines, and he clears it right up into the sky. Garung's underneath it. Will get it headed towards halfway. Coventry win it back, and it's Liam Kelly finds Van Awijk on this near side as we move into three minutes of minimum stoppage time at the end of this cup tie, as indicated by the fourth official down beneath us. Can Maidstone get one little moment in these stoppage time minutes? Well, it's Lamar Reynolds at pace down the left-hand side, but Lati Bogier didn't let him get away. And he kept it in play on this near touch sign. The hold of the ball clearly wasn't over the line as far as the assistant was concerned. And then Ezenolim brings down Van Awijk, and it's a quickly taken free kick in Coventry. One to fifth here, they're Sprinting forward, Matty Godden up towards the edge of the area. Just runs out of room in the end, and Ricochet takes it away from him. But the ball up to halfway is intercepted by Thomas, and Van Awijk has it again for Coventry City. Kelly up to O'Hare. Oh, little flick gets Godden in. Godden runs across Greenwich, can't get the shot away. Does it the second time. Palmed out by Kovalan, and Tavares is in again for two goals in two minutes. For Fabio Tavares to make it 5-0. Somewhat unfair on Maidstone United to be this far behind because they've worked so hard. But Coventry didn't want to declare at four. They've kept pushing. They have a fifth. Tavares has his second. In stoppage time, it's Coventry five. Maidstone United nil. They've been relentless tonight. They wanted to squash all hope of a giant killing and they've done it in style. Godden almost gets himself a goal. It's a lovely little back flick to put him in the area by O'Hare. Lovely save from Kovalan at full stretch to deny Godden. But there is Tavares, two yards out, left foot. Open goal. And they have their five. So his second goal of the night, his first two goals of the season. Fabio Tavares. And we've had two minutes of the allotted three, so there might be a bit more to play. But the referee seemed to take pity on Maidstone and only played two of the three in the first half. Ball's back with Joel Latibodier in these last knockings here at the Coventry Building Society Arena. And one of those rare nights, I guess, where almost everybody goes home happy. Yeah. Even well, the Maidstone fans beaten 5-0. They'll be so proud of their players and the efforts they've made. But they've still got some defending to do. Because here's Jada Silva, left-hand side of the box, fizzes it across the face of Golden. Kovalan holds on to it this time as Van Awijk was closest to him and 
George Elikobi calling for calm, yeah. saying, don't get rid of it, just hold on to it for a second. Yeah, just calm it down. But look, they're going to get a great ovation from, from all four corners of the ground. I'm pretty sure of that, Maystown United, and they deserve it. You know, they've beaten Barra, they've beaten Stevenage, they've beaten Ipswich, but they couldn't beat Coventry. Full-time whistle goes, and Coventry City are into the last eight of the FA Cup for the first time since the 2008-9 season. And in doing so, they've ended the FA Cup dreams of National League South Maidstone United. 5-0 in the end to the Sky Blues. A first half hat-trick from Ellis Sims. A late brace as we went into added time from Fabio Tavares, his first goals of the season. Maidstone really gave it their all, particularly early on. But Coventry's class was far too much for them in the end. Shirts being swapped on the halfway line, handshakes, and soon enough, I'm sure the Maidstone players will make their way to the south stand end to our right to take the acclaim of those nearly 5,000 travelling fans who haven't seen the shock that they would have dreamt about as their heads hit their pillows last night, but they will want to salute their heroes as they head back to Kent, hoping that they can at least get back to league business and sort out promotion. But for Coventry, they're into the last eight of the FA Cup. The 87 winners go through by five goals to nil as George Elikobi now just does a little lap of honour and takes the acclaim of the Coventry support. Top man George Elikobi, we wish him and Maidstone well for the rest of the season. But they're out. Coventry are through. Full time here at the CBS Arena. Coventry City 5, Maidstone United 0. Well, they've made some incredible memories along the way. It wasn't to be in the end for Maidstone United. It was always going to get tougher and tougher throughout the competition. And tonight they met a side in Coventry City who were right at it from the off. Those early goals really made it a mountain to climb. And in the end, maybe even an unfair scoreline. It finishes Coventry 5, Maidstone nil. Um, Adrian Clark, firstly, on the winners, very much deserved. Oh, they were outstanding. From minute one right until the end, they kept their foot on the accelerator, Coventry City, and they made sure there was not a sniff of an upset here at the CBS Arena tonight. It was it was a really good performance. Um, excellent hat-trick from Ellis Sims. Fabulous cameo performances from Casey Palmer, Callum O'Hare in the, in the second half. And then Tavares pops up with a couple at the end. It was... It was excellent. I think from back to front, I, I think Mark Robbins will be delighted with the attitude and the performance levels of every single player involved tonight. Fabio Tavares put in a great shift, got himself a couple of goals as well. Exactly, yeah, he, he worked really hard and, and yeah, he, he got his reward for that right at the end. It would have been nice, I think, for Maidstone to, to maybe draw the second half. You know, they'd, mm. they'd contained Coventry pretty well for long periods. He'd gone a little bit more defensive, I think really because they'd run out of gas. They just couldn't get up and support the forwards anymore. So they just put men behind the ball. Um, but, but yeah, in the end, the superior fitness, the superior quality from Coventry City helped them extend that lead. But look, Maystone can come away from here with their heads held high. Look, the fans are giving them a wonderful ovation away to our right, and they deserve it. Uh, just to let you know, Johan Visser has pulled a goal back for Brentford in our live game over on Talk Sport 2. Currently West Ham 4. Brentford 2, uh, just around 10 or so minutes to go with uh, time added on included. So uh, maybe setting them up for a bit of a grandstand finish there. That goal being checked for VAR, but looks like it is going to be just uh, onside. Um, finally, just on the pride for Maidstone, Adrian, during this journey, it's been something special uh, for the football club. Um, and it's an inspiration, if you like, for other clubs at their level to push themselves in this competition as much as they can. Yeah, they're probably going to raise, you know, in excess of £900,000 before tax for the football club. That is a massive deal as well. 
but also they've galvanized people around the team. Almost 5,000 fans there this evening. We've seen the home game that they had earlier on in the competition, the attention that really focused on them in the local area, and that's important for Legacy too. Yeah, Mason have given inspiration to non-league uh, non clubs around the country, haven't they? they, they mm. They've said, because, well, you know, they're eighth in their league. They're not in the National League, they're in the National League South. You know, teams at that level and even below have a, ha, have a right to dream that maybe we can reach the latter stages of the FA Cup. They're unlucky, Maystone, not to draw Premier League opposition. They would have loved that, of course. But they've had two great experiences at Ipswich and again here tonight at Coventry City. The players will never forget it. The fans that have followed them in both games will, will treasure those memories too. And, and yeah, next year, every, every non-league team, you know, around their level will come into this competition and think, can we do a Maidstone? Mm, mm, mm. And, and that, I think, is wonderful for the FA Cup. It's, it's been a great story. It, it, it's remarkable. It's a massive overachievement. It's, it's not since the 1970s that a team from their level has, has come this far. So they deserve all the acclaim that they're going to receive. Absolutely. Adrian Clark, Ian Danter, thank you so much for being with us on commentary this evening. It's important for Coventry too. They are into the final eight of the FA Cup, uh, the first time since 2009 that they've managed that.